here. And then... Hello again, everybody. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We are Digital Eclipse. I'm yes. I'm Ian, and this is Justin. Hi. And again, deja vu. Some of the regular streamers on our Saturday stream. Today we'll be doing a little bit of wizardry for you, the NES version. And um, we both are developers on yes. the the remake version that yes. Digital Eclipse has recently released. So we'll be uh, talking about it a little bit and uh, playing this classic game. And I think this stream is going to be very interesting because I played wizardry as a kid and I was a big wizardry plant fan and I played it a bunch recently. I didn't. And Justin is not that into some of the gameplay of Wizardry, so I think we're going to have like yeah. a like a kind of a nice nice little banter for this stream, and that's yeah. good because yeah. we're probably also going to be doing a lot of grinding, oh, so yeah. the banter is going to carry this stream quite a bit. Grind it up, <laughs> yeah. So, anything you want to get into before we uh, jump in? Um, no, I was like I was saying earlier, I brought. Let's, Good paper. I got some uh, graph paper with the idea of maybe trying to map out our adventures the way that it's intended, but we'll see how well I, that goes. I because... think that's probably not super realistic unless you can map really, really fast. Well, that's, well, so yes. I, you, you know, I guess part of the conversation is what exactly are we going to do with this game today? And the, the reality is this is not a game we can probably finish in four hours. What? So... Speed runs? We could try. We could give it our best try and get mm -hmm. as far as we can. That's sort of what my plan was. Yes. But if we were to approach it that way, we probably won't actually be doing a lot of exploring. We'll probably be doing things very efficiently and... and uh, sure. Like, you, you're, we're not going to wander down the dark corridors where you know you don't need to go. Exactly. Exactly. We're not going to just blindly run into death. And uh, it'll find us. Uh, an unfortunate reality of this game is... Well, fortunate or unfortunate, like that was part of the fun of the exploration of the time, but the, the critical path in this game is very, very short. You do okay. not have to do much exploration at all. But anyway, let's get started, because like I said, we got a lot to do if we're going to do anything on this. Got stream. it. We need to prove um, our grounds. Yes. I did, before we started the stream, I did a factory reset of this NES game, so we're starting with a completely fresh... You, you uh, deleted my game? I deleted your game. My save? Yeah. yeah. You, you weren't going to play it ever again. All right, so let's, let's jump in. So this is one of the original Blobbers that was created in... <laughs> Re Rex Char 1, thank you for getting the popcorn and being in it for the long haul. We appreciate it. Apologies in advance. <laughs> uh, 1981, this was released for the Apple II. The, um, the version that we ported to the PC was based on that version. This version is subtly different, but the broad strokes are kind of the same. Uh, so what is a blobber? A blobber is a first-person dungeon-crawling RPG where you play as not just one character, but a party of characters. The concept of a blobber is you're moving as a blob through the maze. I actually had not yeah, heard that term before powerful. we started working on this game. So nice. It's, it's a new term to me. Uh, but anyway, you start off wizardry. You're not really given any introductory text at all. And we're going to need to create some which, characters. Which is, is fun. Um, and again, like you mentioned earlier, uh, I did not play this game when I was a wee lad. My first introduction into the world of NES role-playing games was Final Fantasy. Um, that my mom brought home one day saying, oh, I was at a garage sale and I got a couple of cartridges. It was literally just the cartridge. Mm -hmm. And she was like, the person said to just play with the files that were in there. So they had characters that were like all maxed out. Um, and I eventually deleted all that and whatever. But that also sort of throws you in to just like character select, I think. Mm -hmm. A character creation, and it doesn't give you anything else. So that's the similarity that I'm trying to say. It sort right. of throws you into exploring the game. Whoops. So this game is largely text-based. So we're in the castle town now, and in the castle town is a tavern, an inn, a trading post, the temple, and the edge of town, there's a couple more locations. So the tavern is where we will go to, re to add characters to our party. The inn is where we will go to rest our characters. The trading post is where we will buy and sell goods. Right. The temple is where we will try to revive our dead and injured characters. And we're going to go to the edge of town now because from the edge of town, we go to the training grounds. That's where we register characters. We may enter the maze. The NES version, unlike the Apple II version, has a restart and out party. And that's if you left your party in the dungeon, you would be able to resume them right. using this option. Yeah. Um, you do want to select leave game to do a proper save when you exit the game. If you don't do that, it's sort of fuzzy whether you're 
your progress is going to be presented. So you have to go to the and castle, castle just goes and back then to the castle. So it's, just, it's really, the reason this menu exists in this form is because that's all the text you could display on the Apple II. Amazing. So, you know, there's really, what, eight options, but mm -hmm. they can only show five at a time, that's right? It. So then, okay, so then the, go back to the edge of town, because I thought the edge of town was Oops. where... Well, we're making a character. We'll go back in a second. Let's reset everything. Um, but the edge of town, I thought, was that was where you had to go to get into the maze. Is that right? Yes. So then on that other, you go to the castle and then you can go straight to the maze from there instead mm -hmm. of going to the edge of town. Did it look like it said maze in there? You have to go to the edge of town to go to the maze. Mm -hmm. And then when you were in the castle menu, it also said maze in, as one of the options. I don't think that's true. Maybe it is. Uh -huh. Maybe I missed it. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, how does rolling characters work? It's a very slow process on the NES. And you roll for a bonus that you can apply to your initial stats. And we're not going to do that because that will make for really, really awful streaming content if we sit here and just roll characters over and over. Now, I am going to do it not times? Oh. name my characters meaningfully because if I get a really good roll, I might. What, what my, my plan is to name my characters after their class because that's going to help me keep them straight while we play this game. Right. But if I make a really good roll, I might change which class I'm currently rolling. Okay. So the, I want to create, my, my initial party is going to be a balanced party. I'm going to create two fighters. Sure. One priest, one thief, yes. a bishop, which uh -huh. is maybe the only advanced class I'm going to make, uh -huh. and a mage. Right. So this is going to be one of my fighters. He didn't roll very well, so we'll just give him some strength. No six spellcaster party situation? Uh, you know, later on, it's really good to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But let's see. I actually want to get... Um, well, we're going to just max out his strength, basically, to start. Right. And I'm going to make this a fighter. And, and that's the kind of stuff. And then oh, I'll I see. continue creating characters. So that was A. Yeah. I will now make uh, B. There we go. I love it. But that's, yeah, that's and the we'll way make that him a dwarf because we're still me. maybe making a, a fighter. Oh, I see, I see. And we only got six this time. That's not very good. Uh, dwarves are very slow. We're just going to go with this. We're not going to back yep. out and try to... Well, you have to finish this process and then roll another character to do this on the NES. Wow. So it's very I love small. It. I love it. <laughs> uh, so next we'll make our priest. I'm going to name him C for now. And yes. C is going to be... Dwarves make good priests too, so I'll okay. take a dwarf again. He's a good priest. We've got a nine. That's not bad. So we'll, we'll make him... They're called clerics on the NES, but they are also still priests. Uh, I'm going to also give him some strength and maybe fix up his agility a little bit. How about this? Uh, that's our cleric. I create D. D is going to be our rogue. And D is going to be a hobbit. They make pretty good rogues. We've been called youngins. <laughs> youngins. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're just trying to make good streaming content. Uh, okay, so we need to get our agility up to make a rogue. Um, mm -hmm. I am going to distribute the rest of these points to strength and vitality because early on I'm going to have my rogue in my back row. Okay, so then as a thief, luck is the better stat, primary stat than agility? Uh, Compared, comparatively speaking? Yes and no. Okay. They're, they're used for different things. And uh, I probably couldn't just rattle off everything it's used for. If I had the source in front of me, I could, but I don't right now, so. Yes. Uh, so that's our rogue. We haven't gotten a good roll yet. That's interesting. So was that D? So now we want a bishop. That's going to be E. Yes, and the bishop, an elf makes a good bishop. So we'll make him a Sounds good bishop. Good. All right, let's see if we can even afford to make him a bishop. Okay, they're called wizards in this game, not bishops. Uh, okay, I'm just going to give the rest of these points to uh, Vitality. And here's our Bishop. And one more. F is going to be our Wizard. And Elves make good Wizards too. Right. So we'll go Magic ahead creatures. and boost Eight his points. IQ. Um, IQ. But also Vitality and Agility. So we'll keep that. So now we're going to rename them. We didn't get a single good roll. That's kind of crazy. And and a good roll would have been um, for oh, the NES version. I still what? have. 
That's weird. It didn't actually save that I wiped my save data. Hmm. Oh, those are the previous characters? Yeah, well, let me delete those guys. Yeah. I don't want them around. <laughs> Hilarious. Thought I, I thought I did a factory set, but I guess I didn't. I wasn't sure how to do it. There's like secret buttons and stuff you press. Right. So anyway, uh, oops, I still need to rename them. Unless we're playing with A, B, C, D, and E. So look, wait, castle on is right there. Yeah. So nice. we're in the castle now. Oh, okay. We have four options, which are Got it. Oh, tavern in, trading post, temple, and then the edge of town. Oh, we have the training oh. ground, the maze, and then some game options. Oh, I get it. Okay. Or to return to the castle. Uh, so back to the training grounds. We're going to rename these guys. So A is a uh, fighter. Yes. And I name him Fighter One. Because in there, this game, your characters are very likely to die, so we don't want to get too attached. Yes. We're going to change our B to Fighter Two. And we can change names like at any point. I didn't mean to. Uh, yes. Okay. So in theory, we can just name them trash names, and then once they've earned, once they've proven themselves and survived long enough, potentially we could. Sure. They could receive honorary names. I mean, the reason I named them A, B, C, and D, and so forth was because uh, their their roles might be. Oh, we got a request to name one of our fighters. Bill's Bill's Bill, Bill, Bill Kinzar. All right. B I L C U N Z. I will go back and change that in a minute. Let me yes. get these other two guys here. Uh, this is our thief. I can name him Stabby. Yeah. Stabby Stabby. One. Stabby. <laughs> uh, we're going to change our E. This is our bishop. I don't care if you call him a wizard, Nintendo. I'm calling him a bishop. <laughs> Finally, who's the last guy? The mage is a mage. We just name him F. <laughs> just, just letter, just. Oops, meat. Mage. <laughs> Legally distinct Frodo. <laughs> okay, so we wanted to change a name of our fighter. We, we will do this for the sake of the stream. Yes. Uh, what is the word there? Bill Conzar. Bill Conzar. One B I L. One B I L. Yes. <laughs> Does this fit? Um, Z A R. Let's see if it does. Nope. <laughs> Bill <Conza. laughs> That works. Good enough. How about this? This reads a little better. Bill Conza. There we go. <laughs> nice. All right. So there we go. We have a party. Well, we don't technically have a party. We made a bunch of characters. Now we have to go to the, the tavern. It's like we just like walked into the place and said, "Hey, who's up for adventure?" And people just raised their hands yeah. and then just like resumed their tavern hanging out. And we're like, "Well, do you guys, do you guys want to go with us?" That's where this part is, I guess. Okay. So we added them to our party. Now we're going to get them uh, geared up. Let's see. We want to. Oops, I went to the inn. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to go to the trading post. So the mage is easy, because the mage can use almost nothing. So we're going to buy the mage a staff. Sure. And we're going to buy the mage some robes. And, is, and everyone has the same gold? No, you gold actually gold? roll a random number of gold when you create a character. Or, so if you oh. wanted to also grind up for gear before you enter the dungeon, you could roll characters and take their gold and then delete them. Wow. But that's also that's still not very good streaming. A process so we're not to be doing that. make the characters and then transfer the money from one character to another, right? Right. So we're gonna get our bishop an anointed mace mm -hmm. and some. He can wear leather armor. Can he use a small shield? He can. Okay. Uh, we're gonna get our thief a short sword, of course. Mm -hmm. A small shield and some leather armor. All right, we're gonna buy. Oops. Now these guys are our front row, so we want them well equipped to start. So we're our gonna priest. buy our priest an anointed mace. We're no, why not a why not a, a flail? It's way more. It's expensive. very expensive. Just, we don't want that just yet. 
We need him a large shield, mm -hmm. and I don't think we can actually afford any chainmail the way I just did that. Uh, but that's kind of what I want. We can. Okay, we'll get him some chainmail. But we want to upgrade these guys to breastplates soon. We're going to be doing similar things for our fighters. So let's go ahead and buy the fighter a longsword, a large shield, and some chainmail. And then we'll do the same for fighter two. Longsword. Large shield. And chainmail. Okay, so I think I think I can quickly equip this stuff in the maze. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the maze with our newly equipped party. Well they're not equipped yet. I need to equip them, but they're they're geared out. So we're gonna Got go it. into the maze here. And I'll do an equip. And so now, the longsword, oh, chainmail, large shield. It's just going to go through all the characters. Longsword, chainmail, large shield. Because again, you Unlimited purchase mace, everything, chainmail, but large it does shield. not yeah. automatically equip sure, it because... Right. Leather armor, small shield, anointed mace, leather armor, small shield, staff, robes. All right. So I guess there would be situations where you would want to buy items, but then not automatically equip it to characters? There are consumables in this game. They are very cost inefficient, so I probably will not be buying any. Got it. Um, and now that we're in the maze, we're going to talk about the difficulty curve of this game a little bit. It's brutally difficult. It's like it's like this. And at, it, with a first level party like the party I have right now, the first encounter could be absolutely lethal. So what we're going to do is we're going to hang kind of near the stairs to oh. up, back up to the castle. Um, Should I map this out? You can. You're welcome to try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how quickly I'm gonna move once I start doing some stuff here, yes. and then you go, "Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm not gonna try it." I'll or, just, I'll or just... if you're really into it, you say, "Like, slow it down. I want to draw this kind of picture." I mean, I, I think uh, initially I thought that would be fun, but that would be um, obnoxious <laughs> for everyone involved. All right, so we're we're one floor down from the castle if we go up these Got stairs it. here we'll return to the castle we're located at zero zero i Got know it. that only because i've played this game before there we go that's the lower left corner of the map got it now again um remind me like uh rope like pivoting um that counts as movement so it therefore does. you could spin in place and, and have encounters okay so we're not going to do that and there's a reason we're not going to do that but so the so way close. encounters work in wizardry is very very interesting and complicated and you'd never know it from playing the game i only know it because i got to work on it yes um and the way it works is you have a very small chance of encountering an enemy at any given time from any given action got it however in addition to that there are these areas in each floor that are painted, they're, they're basically the rooms on the floor, or certain rooms on the floor yes. that are painted that could be populated with an encounter. Okay. And those could encounters be. drop better loot than the basic random encounters. So there so are, we're are going specific to be areas that we kind of want for those, yeah. Got it. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm just gonna, I, took, I turned right, I'm gonna walk down this hall here and I'm going to go through this door here. Now, uh, people yes. have kind of worked this out. They, they have something that, that it had something to do with the doors, yes. but it's even more complex than that because it's actually the entire room behind this door may be populated with a fixed encounter. It's a roll, and we're going to go in there and find out, hey, we got, <laughs> it's we got a fixed encounter. We Ooh, surprise the monsters. That's a really good start. So we get like one free action? Oh, man, look at those uh, guys. And it's slime. Slimes are super easy. I'm not concerned about this. I just want to point out, this is, you know, the art in this game is actually very impressive. It's, yeah, they, it's use, they have large character sprites with a lot of colors in them. Yeah. And I love, this is almost one of my favorite sprites in the game. Yeah, it's This is cool. the unidentified art for the slime. And it just, it looks so wet and goopy yeah. with like, you know, what is that, 200 pixels or whatever? Something it's it's like solid. Um, but anyway, the way enemies work, I, I said it was an unidentified slime. So yes. when you encounter an enemy, uh, you don't necessarily know what it is right away. And every round you roll a little bit to see if you determine what it is. Right. We have not identified these slimes. There are some unknown type of slime. And I forgot, so then is this art going to change or is this... If we identify the slimes before I kill them. But anyway, Got it. Uh, I'm going to have my front row fight these slimes and my back row is going to parry because that's all they can do from the back row. Yes. And we're going to say, yep, go ahead, do that, and we'll see what happens. 
We killed a slime, we hit one for one, and we killed another. So now we did identify the slime, mm -hmm. and it turns out there are bubbly slimes, which there is this go. like pink pile of goo here. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna continue to fight them, uh -huh. and we killed them. We got 27 experience, and this is why I went through this door, because nice. I got a treasure chest drop. Now, if I didn't have an encounter, or if I had a random encounter on the first floor, assuming it uses the same encounter table as the Apple II version, we would right. not have gotten a chest here. Got um, it. And chests have better loot generally than, than non-chests. Got it. So I'm going to have my thief inspect the chest, and he thinks the chest is trapped with an exploding box. That's kind of a high level trap for this floor, so he could be wrong about it, but we're gonna, we're gonna listen to him and we're gonna try to disarm okay. an exploding box chest. He couldn't disarm it, but he didn't set it off. That's good. So, so we're it is try trapped. again. We don't know that. This is what the game is telling us. Couldn't Darn. disarm it. Uh-oh, come on, guy. So can, you, how, can you just keep trying? As long as you don't set it off, you can keep trying. Oh my god. Oh, we oh, set it man. off. Exploding box. Oops. What happened? Oops. Well, nobody died. Where's That's a good sign. Hits, hits but are... we've been kind of badly injured. Wait, hits is our is our hit health. Points. Yes. That's how many so hits you fighter can take. two is very badly hurt. Um, um, yes. Some of our back row is hurt, so we're we're gonna feel... we're gonna go back to town. I oh will... boy, we had a random encounter on the way, but they were friendly. So oh. we're gonna say goodbye to these groups of rogues because rogues are very dangerous in yeah. these two. So I'm going to, uh, that's the oh, wrong yeah. button. I'm gonna enter camp. Okay. And I'm gonna have my priest cast some of his healing spells on my front row. And again, um, in- I Covered one hit point for that. Oh that's boy. Freaking great. In and this game, like the, the instruction manual, um, which was paper that explained information about the game you were playing, does, did they explain what the spells did? Because the names obviously are not like heal spell. Yeah, well, the Apple II manual did for sure. I don't remember what the NES manual okay. said. I wonder like uh, how much of it was just like trial and error and stumbling through the game. Well, if you didn't have the manual, you were in a lot of trouble. Well, yes. That's, um, and that's there wasn't the internet really in this era. So, so we're going to go back up to town. And the reason we're going to go back up to town is my priest is now out of spells. He cast Got both it. the spells he can cast at first level. Um, and he did wiped. some good healing, but not perfect healing. So we're going to go to the inn, and we're going to have the priest stay at the inn, and the priest is going to stay at the stables. Why is the priest staying at the stables? So, uh, any room you stay at will recover all of your spells, uh -huh. including the stables. Got it. You can pay to stay at more expensive rooms, but early on in the game, you're really, really uh, gated by the amount of money you have. So we're mostly going to be like, when we right. heal, rather than have people resting at the inn, we're going to have our priest stay in the stables. Just sleep next to the horses. recover his spells over and over. Um, and then that's how we're going to do our healing. There we um, go. So our fighters are both eight hit points, and our priest is at max anyway. Our back row is a little injured, but they can't be hit on this floor. So they, we're oh, just going to go back okay. in and uh, keep fighting some And stuff. they can't be hit on this floor because all the enemies just don't all, have No enemy on reach? this floor has so a speak. spell. The only way they can Got hit it. our back rows with a spell. The spell is, okay. Or a breath weapon or something like that. Got it. Um, okay, so that, that was our first fight. <laughs> it took a long time because we oh immediately gosh. had to heal. So I'm gonna go through that door again and we got another encounter again, and that's good. And again, that fight was easy. The problem we mm. had was the chest. We blew ourselves up yes. with a chest trap. So and was there gonna, only one slime last time? There were three. Oh, okay, so there's so this isn't as oh you just chopped through those guys like they were yeah, butter. The slimes are are absolutely the easiest enemy mm -hmm. we can encounter this for. So the more slimes we encounter, the um, and so that of, slime didn't have a chest, which okay. means that was not actually a fixed encounter. Oh, that gotcha. was a random encounter that just happened there. Oh, so all the fixed encounters have chests that correct are okay. Again, if it uses the same data as the Apple II, sure. okay, we'll leave our friendly skeletons alone. Uh, so this game has a, an alignment system, which you saw as we were creating yes. our characters. We got to pick our alignment, and you can change your character's we'll alignment guys. by attacking friendly characters. You can make them evil. In the Apple II version, there's no way to make your characters good. I've heard mm -hmm. rumors that in later versions, perhaps in this version of Wizardry, you can make evil characters good by not attacking friendly characters. Okay. Um, and the things that alignment affects are a good and an evil character will not team up in the 
inn, in the tavern. Got if it. If you want to do that, you have to do some shenanigans, leaving some of them in the maze to group them up. Right. Um, also, some of the higher level gear uh, requires a particular alignment. We'll, we'll find that out later, later on. Uh, so small humanoids are either orcs or kobolds. They're probably going to be pretty easy for us mm -hmm. to fight. So we're Again, just going to go ahead and try to kill these guys. Yeah. Fine. They look like the um, Lord of the Rings movies. From yeah. <laughs> yes. The rotoscope stuff. Super Ooh, good. Yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage, though. Okay, we killed a humanoid, uh, but we're badly injured in our front row. Interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, since we're already going to return to town, I'm going to have my front row fight, but now I'm going to have my back row cast some offensive magic. So they're going to cast Halito, which is a little fire spell. And our priest died. <laughs> so they were kobolds, uh -huh. and we have a dead priest. Yeah, look at that art. And our fighter died also. Goodness. Um, please kill the kobold. Okay, we did kill the kobold. Our we thief lost is still guys. alive, so we're going to inspect... Well, that's definitely not right. It is not a mage's misery trap. That would not appear on this floor. So what we do yeah. when we when we suspect we've identified the wrong trap is we still disarm a trap, but we pick one of the, the, the simpler traps. So poison needle is okay. a very common trap on this floor. So I'm going to tell him to try to disarm a poison needle trap. Oh, no. And it was a crossbow ah. bolt. And he didn't die. He took a little damage. Right. Which one of those? The thief who did that? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I Jesus. guessed wrong, but it was definitely not the thing he said it was. All right, so our priest is dead. Fighter 2 is dead. And our fighter 2 is dead. So what we're going to do... Pilikonzor is... is alive. Pilikonzor. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to remove all their stuff. <laughs> Just dragged the body back up to town, dumped them on the ground, looted the body... So then if you, hmm, okay, so if you just took the dead character to the temple and try, if, and if you've had money to try to resurrect them, and then if that failed and it like destroyed them, would it just, it would destroy anything that's still equipped on them? Uh, yes. Like, so that's the reason why you want to strip down your characters. Well, it's worse than that. I haven't finished the thought yet, but um, I'm taking their gear off because I'm just going to delete these characters. Because they're level one and they've literally survived two fights, so there's no reason to try to spend money to resurrect True. them. True, yes. <laughs> I agree with that fully, but yes. Uh, and I will make sure that we have all uh, the money. Okay. Okay, back up the stairs. You get to the temple and you're like, w would you like us to intern your following comrades? Like, no, 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 I got an even better idea. Shoinks. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, sorry, we're going to go to the edge of town and we're going to create a new fighter. I think that was our dwarf fighter. And it's not a good roll again, but we'll take it. Fighter. And we lost our priest too, so we're going to make a new priest. Both dwarves, I guess, in this case. Hey, a good roll. Hmm. 16. Interesting. Ooh. Interesting. Well, that doesn't really get us anything with the priest, and I don't think we can get to a samurai, so I'm just going to make him like a tough priest. I guess I should fix some of his weaknesses. Uh, he doesn't need IQ, but maybe a luck. Alright. Yeah, so we're gonna delete uh, Fighter 2, who's dead. Oh boy. And we're gonna delete Priest, who's dead. And then we're going to rename those two. And he is our fighter. What are the folks saying? I don't get to read it, so you have to tell me if there's something. Oh, I'm there's sorry. Uh, Rackstar one was was asking, um, but what we're gonna, what are we going to tell their mothers? 
for the oh, fallen yeah. comrades. And we're, I just we're gonna delete their mothers too. I just <laughs> right. I just said that they they knew what they signed up for. Like it's this, they signed an NDA or no? Is that the oh, there. And this is priest. This priest hopefully will have a few more hit points. All right, we'll go to the Avengers in. No. Why not? Oh, not the end. Sorry, the tavern. Mm -hmm. okay. And we will add now. Hey, we have a party. Uh, Again. We'll go back to the edge of town. We'll go back into the maze. We're going to give the gear back to the fighter. He gets the long sword, that and that. And he's like, why is there blood all over this? <laughs> like, no, 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 no don't worry about it. Don't look too closely. And I believe our thief had the rest of the gear. Yes. Oops. There's a footstool inside this boot. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extra foot. Give that to the priest. And then we'll equip stuff for you. Yep. And equip stuff for you. And it's like nothing ever happened. Oh boy. And look how much more hit points he has. That's great. Uh, yes. My fighter's a little injured, so I'm actually going to already cast a spell to heal him. Great. 10, 9, and 11. That's great. So, this is so, you're still just going to that same room. I am. Men in chain. Uh, this is going to be oh boy. bad. But These are awesome highway art. men, which are, they hit very hard. So and I'm going to fight. You know that they're highwaymen because the men in chain is the unknown descriptor. Correct. Yeah, so right. Thief can't do anything. I'm going to have the bishop cast Halito, but I'm going to have the mage. He doesn't have any spell warning, so I should have recovered my <laughs> spell points. So I'm going to have the bishop cast Katino. Katino so, is a sleep spell, so I'm hoping to put these guys to sleep. But the first one is going to do Halito, and that's the is that a fire? Yeah, but I'm out of spell points. I got Small one cast, and it's going to oh, be Katino. Oh, so you're so going to try to put him to sleep. Cross yeah. your fingers for me. This is not going to go well. This might be <laughs> we might wipe on our what is this our third battle? That's fine. That's the way. Oh boy. So fighter died again. Yeesh. We killed one of them. Asleep, asleep, asleep. All right. We can probably keep going with this. There's three of them. Wait, there's three of them left? Yep. This is his. Priest died again. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to par party wipe here probably. Bishop died. <laughs> there's still four. Oh, right. wait. There's three of them though. Do they just... they they? There were there were three of them that were awake. Uh, oh. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We might uh, not survive this. No, again, I mean, we're, we're for sure not going to survive this. Are you trying to figure out whether or not you should just like fight to the death or try to run and then die in along yeah. the way? Yeah. Uh, I mean, in this, I played Dungeons Dragons a bunch, and you do too. I feel in this situation, it's like when you kind of like know the writings on the wall. I kind of just like lean into it and like you let's just go like, for it. Yeah, like let's just like see. Oh, let's we got let's just one. See as as much as we can go. Mage died. All right, two characters left. They have three. We're outnumbered. That's it's fine. A, it's 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 Bill Conzer. Bill Conzer and Thief. <laughs> thief. <laughs> oh, Thief's down. Ooh. Uh. Well, Bill Conzer. Okay. Well, we did not succeed. Uh all right, so here's what I'm gonna do. That didn't go great. Um, but also, that seems like it's kind of um, the experience for starting this kind of game, where it's like you're not gonna just like smooth sailing, like level no, up. sure, like, absolutely. There's, that there's that went a lot worse than I, I have played this game recently. And that was probably the worst start that I've had okay, in this game. Okay. Just just for the stream, I thought we would do that as a treat. There we go. Um, all right, so I guess we're making some more characters. <laughs> that's that's the way the game is. All right, you know what? I'm just going to name them because the renaming is slow. So. Moopy Bun says, great vibes, guys. Good luck below. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Save Fighter 3. Um, while I'm doing this, do, do you want to give out a, a thing? 
Oh, I can do that. Three, uh, three of Cups says, who had bets on the total party wipe <laughs> within the first hour? I, I did. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, let me see here. I think it was on this part here. So we have, for everybody who is watching, we have some codes to hand out from some of the games we've worked on. Um, Karotica and... Our Wizardry Remake, I guess. Oh, that's a bad roll. Ooh, five. Is that five total? Um, so let's see, I will I will go ahead and, how am I supposed to do this? I haven't, I haven't done this, do I just like... Dealer's choice. Cop, um, do I copy paste the code into the chat or do I just like we say We can put it? it in the chat, we can read it aloud, you can put it in the description of the video. I don't know how to do any of that stuff <laughs> other than copying, pasting, and talking out of my mouth. Um, but let's see here. If anybody is interested in getting yourself a Steam version of the making of Kratika, you guys can uh, fight over it in the chat right about now. And I'll put a mark note here for myself that this has been uh, passed out. Thief, Hobbit Thief. Oh, what a roll. Oh man, this guy's <laughs> the best thief. Oh boy. <laughs> That's quite all right. Your stats actually, like, people do like to roll, and it helps you get over this initial hump, but uh -huh. the stats go up really fast in this game, so ultimately it's not going to matter a whole bunch. Alrighty. So which character? This is the bishop? No. Yes. He sneaked into the job of the thief. <laughs> My rolls are much worse this time around. Okay, we're doing this whole thing over again. So we go to the tavern, and get these guys, and go to the trading post. Longsword, hard shield. I mean, maybe this is the kind of stuff that as Came a out. kid I would have been, uh, I would have had the time and I guess the patience and the curiosity to just like dig through all this. And I've played games where they don't really explain things to you and you have to figure it out on your own. And like there's that, there's that fun and the mystery of discovering stuff for the first time and figuring it out putting the pieces together about how the game works, like that's enjoyable. And I've, I've definitely experienced that. Uh, this particular <laughs> scenario, um, at least now in my life, I feel is just like um, very painful to a certain extent, but it's a different era. Well, we tried to make our version a little less painful. Sure. Um, sure, but we're you know we're also trying to be faithful to the original, so yes. we're not making it super easy either. Kind of right. trying to hit somewhere in the middle. It is, it is, yeah. That that's been a very interesting um, line to walk. And again, making a explaining. Right, let's play stuff. some wizardry. <laughs> sure, let's let's try that. So we have a new party. Wow, they're all the health is much higher than all these guys. Yeah, that's weird health numbers, I think. All right. well, hopefully they can survive. I think we missed a armor for our fighters somehow. This uh, L is real 96 is saying, hey, uh, ask if we saw the Tiny Toons University. I haven't watched it yet. It's on my list. But the new series? Yeah. Right? Okay. Got it. 
Right, and Rax401 says, besides in the oh, age of the internet, all really the maps are smart. already online. Which is correct. That's why that didn't work. All right, hang on. This is going to be... Give me all the gold. All well, we can actually get for our fighters... More expensive armor? I guess we'll do that. Alice Real says that they think it's okay, but the original Tiny Toon Adventures is much better. Eh, it's kind of what, what you would expect, right? Sure. Uh, can you pull the gold here? You can. All right. Bye. We got even better armor because I had to Sweet. pull to get uh, get started here. All right, back into the main. And again, this um, AC you want the higher number? Uh, you want a lower, lower number. Lower number. Okay, so this is like echo. This is a, there we go. Yeah, so good. Uh, what the? Do you have an extra? Oh, wait. Oh, we got it for our priest. Even better. Yeah. All right. Now, now, yeah. we're, now we're playing some There you go. Oops, got an encounter already. Right, small humanoids and four of them is not scary. It shouldn't okay. be. Boy, they're consistently hitting, though. Violently thrusts. Oh, man. Okay. I mean... I don't know why they're hitting so much. Yeah. Okay, kobolds. Oh my god, look at my health. Left. Yeesh. Well, there's only one left, though. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. Right. We got a bunch of experience for that. All right. All right. We won't take the stairs up. <laughs> Heal up. <laughs> that was our healing spell. I almost feel like... Um, the Apple II version was easier to get really? started. Like, this is, this has been brutal. I heard a rumor, and maybe this is why, mm -hmm. I heard a rumor that maybe armor class doesn't work on the NES version. Like which would be all? a big, which would be a big uh, disadvantage. How would... Yeah. I, I don't even understand how that would uh, work as in not working. Good thing I wasn't trying to map anything out because I would have just been tearing well, we, up the we first haven't, one. We haven't gotten very far yet. We've well, I mean, literally gone true. nowhere. I could also try to draw from memory from it because the map is the same as what we it is. We built it on top of the original Apple stuff. So, um, so the Apple II version and the NES version has the different? same map for eight of the ten levels. There are actually two different levels on the NES version than there are on. The Apple II version, and those levels are the levels that were contained um, the developer's initials. Um, Robert Robert Woodhead and Andrew Greenberg yes. put their initials in the game. And it was always R on one of them, and then yeah. W? And uh, right. those levels aren't really well designed. Now, the NES levels, I think, also aren't really mm -hmm. well designed. They're kind of really mean with lots of like darkness and teleporters so, and right, so those, pits and stuff. Those extra two levels where they uh, like crossbow bolt. What do you think? You think it's actually a crossbow bolt? Let's see if we sure. actually disarm a chest here. Let's do it. Here. Hey, hey, we did it. Good Sweet. job. Um, we got badly injured again, so we're going to go back and heal. Sorry, what was your question, Justin? Um, the the two levels that that they were placed on here mm -hmm. um, were they also name and initial inspired, or are they? Sort of no, they're, they're original in, designs in this one. Got it. But just, again, punishing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, they are... I kind of don't like this, this design concept. They are levels where um, there are enough one-way doors that you would need the teleport spell to get out, which you might not have access to at the point which you go in there. And I think that's just mean. I, I would not... All right, let's see if we can get two fights with the same party. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I've been surprised. Uh -oh. Not a good start. And Six. Like they're always hitting. That's what's weird about it. So she maybe maybe to... that uh, AC rumor is true. Tries to nibble on right. them. So that's another question that the uh, descriptors that they use for that kind of stuff. Does that? I like. I'm just gonna spam my spells in every do fight because we're going slow. Sorry, the descriptors they use in every fight. Like when it's saying like the scruffy man tries to gnaw at you or tries to nibble at you, and then they end up being kobolds. I like. Do you think that those descriptors are sort of there for specific so, monsters? I've or? already noticed a difference. So the way it works in the Apple Two uh -huh. is there. There's a classification for each enemy as to whether it is sort of a beast type enemy or a yes. creature or a humanoid type enemy or kind of both. Okay. So on, on the Apple II, there are six verbs that it uses for attacking. Got it. And it either uses one set or the other set or both sets. Got this it. one, it looks like it might just have a single pool. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so in the Apple version, it could kind of telegraph a little bit. Nice blind box. <laughs> and my cleric's badly injured. It's fine. He's gonna you, he's gonna disarm it. Here we go. You hey! Oh, nice. We got five gold for our efforts. <laughs> you can't even split that among all six characters. So that's it's an interesting thing that you brought up. Is um, I don't know how the gold dividing code works in the NES. I bet it works the same as the Apple II, which is mm -hmm. um, you roll an amount of gold and it's distributed among your party members, mm -hmm. but the remainder is just discarded. I actually made a change in our version oh. so that doesn't happen. You're Man, welcome. it's the scruffy men again. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to do some fighting. Uh, oh, it's a surprise round. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Rock Shore 1 says, I like the way that the orcs run away. It reminds me of Kramer in the original <laughs> airplane movie. Right, Thank gonna, you. We're going to do a Halito. That was one of the... Yeah, Justin made that animation. Yeah, that was like Justin the, is our animator, so... The orc was the second character, I believe, that I... Third character I got to animate, and I was having fun with uh, the orcs and their helmets and their antics and whatnot. Asleep, asleep, asleep. Nice. All right. Two of them are asleep. You have no spell points. Halito. Yeah, let's do this. Let's yeah. get some rogues. Rogues are good XP. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. We nice. survived. Sweet. <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> All right. It's the small victories. Let's, uh, I think we're out of priest spells as well. Yep. Back to town. Uh, we'll go to the tap or the inn. Is there enough money to buy any? 270 more for a level. Okay. Once we hit one level, things are gonna get a little bit easier. Not a lot easier. Right. You mean as in like once we get to level two? Yep. Okay. Got it. I don't think we're gonna get very far today at all. <laughs> It turns out, who knew? Almost, it's three o'clock. I mean, we got figured out. We'll, we'll, we'll see what right, we can do. Let's see if we can get. I don't think that. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how you could speed run this game. It seems like all the time would just be this beginning part, because I don't know if this is a crossbow bolt. We got it. Yes. Okay. Small humanoids, not scary, but I'm still going to cast Catino because things have been going terrible for us. Ah, they all went to sleep. Killed, killed, killed. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Rockstar one says that they have to admit that yes, having the game come with two default level or coming with the default level two characters makes it so much easier to get started. Yep, and we're talking about, you know, we're listening to everybody's feedback about yep. uh, what they like and what they don't like. So we're talking internally about ways to make it a little... Even mm -hmm. uh, even more smooth. So yeah, stay tuned. Perry, let's have you do a Katino. Killed one. Asleep, 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 asleep. Nice. Dead.
It's throwing yeah. me off because again, there's two Good. small humanoids, but then it's a zero because it's like because that's how many are are active or yeah, something. Basically. Okay, mm -hmm. it's interesting. All right, trapless chest. Well, just in case, we'll, we'll disarm a poison needle, and it was a stunner. What? So and mm. my thief is paralyzed. <laughs> this that's the kind of thing where that just like annoys me, <laughs> where the game tells you. There's no trap, and you're like, cool, no trap. But and he's wrong. He's, there's a chance to identify the trap. Get off. Um, now, isn't, you know, so again, this in the original, there's percentages and all that kind of stuff. And wasn't that something that... We exposed all that information. Right. So, like, that information is, as in this game, opaque to the user. Right. So, so one of the things we did is we, we wanted to make sure if there was some mechanics that weren't like super, super obviously clear from playing yes. the game, we're like, hey, this is what's actually going on in the scene so you can make informed decisions about right. uh, your actions. That's definitely the kind of stuff that for somebody like me would make it less uh, rage quitty or table flippy um, because at least the game is explaining or giving me some information to work off of. All right, we'll go to the temple. It'll cost us 100 gold to unparalyze the thief, but I'm going to do it. Raxfar says we need a bigger roster and we need higher luck and we need, the thief needs higher luck. <laughs> we just spend the, the entire stream just making characters. We're good. And then at the end... I've seen people like, do that. I've watched streams where literally all they did was make characters. Oh my gosh. And then at the end they're probably like, here's the perfect party and that's all we have time for. <laughs> We're higher oh. level. Look at all those... Stats going up. Boom. Priest is not ready. <laughs> Priest is not ready yet, which means nobody else is going to be there. All more XP. Okay. Got it. One more fight, but our fighters leveled, that's so that's good. good. <laughs> A good fighter three and four. Bishop two and priest. Yeah, those are those are the heroes of the realm. Yes. Surprise the monsters. Okay, they're small humanoids. We got one. Oh, I just realized we have only have five characters. Uh oh shoot. Our, we lo we our left Steve somewhere. is in this. <laughs> are they sleeping? <laughs> he's in the, he's taking in the tavern. <laughs> Oops. Well, hopefully we'll survive this and then make it back there to grab him. If not, then the thief can rest assured knowing that oh, they are can't. the I can't it. Oh man. Should I just open it with my fighter? I mean, sure, because you gotta go back to uh -oh. All right, you survived it. There you go. It was worth it. All right. <laughs> this is you a comedy of errors here. Uh, okay. Fighter has a, an arrow in his gut, and the thief's like, you should have, shouldn't have forgotten me. All right. So uh, we might have actually leveled a little bit. Let's see if our priest leveled. Yes. Nice. Yes. New spells. It's not going to matter yet. Bishop. No. Mage. Yes. Two hit points. That's nice. Yes. Okay, let's go back in. And then um, spell points for for casters. Does that, that's, that's by uh, level? Or like so, you you never increase? <laughs> Explain the intricacies. It's very complicated. It's, yes. it's way different than I thought. Um, so the Not way it works is each class has a rate at which they... Um, I'm going to go start collecting some of the key items on this floor sure. um, since we're level two now. But each class has a rate at which they learn spell slots. Uh -huh. um, and if you can cast spells of a certain level, you're guaranteed to learn the first spell at that level. Okay. Oh, I know where we are right yeah. now. In this room, it's a silver statue of a boar with horns and long fangs. Yes. On a wall by the statue's a message, partially obscured, that appears to have been left by passing out. It's hardly legible. But some comments warning about ghosts and demons can still be made out. Will you search? Yes, naturally. Search, of course, we've got to keep. Okay. Um, passing elves, like huh? passing elves through this one closet of a space. Like I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with the layout of this this first level. Oops. Because that's primarily what I was wandering around in. This is Murphy's ghost. This is not where I wanted to go yet. Uh oh. No, we won't search. I wanted to go here. This room, in this room, is a statue of a monster with the body of a chicken and the head of a cat. The statue is yes. made of bronze and lies on an onyx pedestal. 
There are unusual runes on a plaque thereon. There are. Will you search? Uh, yes. Okay, we found another key. Thank you. Rockstar One says that magic spells are assigned to a monster at the beginning of the round, so if a fighter kills the targeted monster before the mage gets his turn, then the spell gets wasted. That is That's true. That's correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh -oh. And the real Fippin says, hello, I'm kind of wondering who owns the IP nowadays? Uh, it depends on which games you're referring to. So the first five scenarios, which would be one through five, mm -hmm. are owned by the Certex. We're working with them to release this game. Right. Oh, I'm very lost. That's not good. <laughs> oh, no. Where the heck am I? It is dark. Um... Should we look at my map? Oh, I haven't been... Um... There we go. Okay, phew. That was almost very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I got disoriented in the darkness. And that so that we got the key items in this floor, so I'm just going to keep hitting the uh, encounters. Sure, until we reach sure. About level three? If you feel confident that we're not going to die instantly. The slimes, that was another enemy that I was I never said we're not going to die instantly. Well, okay, fine. Fair enough. Yes. But the uh, the slime characters, the creeping crud, the bubbly slimes, those were those were fun characters to work out how we were going to make them work. I was pleasantly surprised at those guys. I don't think I finished explaining how uh, oh. spell slimes work. Yeah, sorry. Uh, hang on, let me inspect this chest. Gas bomb? I don't think that's right. It was an exploding box, and it killed the bishop. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so, each class has a rate at which they learn spells. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a slot to cast a spell at a particular level, you will learn the first spell from that set automatically. Mm -hmm. You roll as you level up, including that level, to learn the other spells at the mm -hmm. uh, that spell level. However, there's a minimum amount of spell slots you have per level that's equivalent to the number of spells you know at that level. Okay. An interesting thing about the Apple II game, which again, I don't know if it's identical for the NES game, mm -hmm. is it's actually quicker to get to level three than it is to get to level two. Oh, interesting. Uh, all right, we'll pay to revive our dumb bishop. Or attempt. We'll, we'll pay to attempt it, you're correct. We'll right. pay to attempt to revive our dumb bishop. For everybody That's watching, so crazy. what do you think is gonna happen? Oh boy. He's oh my back. gosh, he's cured. He was not ashed. So we will add him back to our party. Um, now there is a, I'm being a little uh, carefree with my gold. And the reason I'm doing that is we're our it's first party, party. Yes. who got wiped, Yes. they're still in the dungeon. And at any time, I can go get them and get their stuff and their money. Do you remember where I do are? remember where. Oh, so we should go do that. Uh, right. Do you think we should? Is that I mean, if their stuff is I can there. get them back to town. I mean, I don't know. It's like whatever. Um, the way I would do that is... Well, like, I thought that was a fun aspect of the game. I don't think I realized that that was a thing that this game included. Like, I like the idea of leaving your, like, making characters and groups, party adventures, leaving them in, you know, the, the dungeon, essentially, and then going back and making more characters. Like, I was just, it was just kind of a fun aspect of the game. The Real Fippin saying they were always wondering about the max HP that you get when you change a class. It seems to always be one HP Oh, every well, time you level. I can explain that too. Uh -huh. Until you reach the level that you change classes? Is this the same in the Apple version? Yes. So the way health works in this game is uh, 
He's retaining. Every okay. time you gain a level, yes. you have a certain number of hit dice that corresponds to your level. Okay. So it's your level times the hit dice for your class. It's 10 for fighters and 8 for priests and I think 6 for thieves and 4 for mages or something like that. Okay. Like D&D yes. rolls from that. So every time you level, you re-roll all of your hit dice. And if the number is higher, you get to keep it. And if the number is lower, you just get one hit point. So you always get one hit point, but it sort of keeps your health like averaged out. So that's why that's when you so change classes, you keep the hit points from your previous class, but you won't get meaningful increases okay. until you're approximately the level you were at. Okay. Um, so we're going to search here. It's like a fascinating, odd way to do it. And we're going to grab three of these guys. Now we're going to bring them back to town. And now we're going to go back and get the other three. Oh, you were already you were already grabbing the the. Yeah, you just told me to. Did you change your mind? No. Yeah, let's go. Let's go put them back. Let's drag them <laughs> back down. So we change our mind. We're gonna leave you. I'm gonna actually have the priest. I just didn't even see it happen. You were so fast. Oh, he's got no spells. Uh, Real Thimmons says, OMG, thirty-year-old mystery solved. <laughs> what about the hit point stuff? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, nice. There's friendly skeletons. So we get the rest of our uh, party. Awesome. Okay, so our original dudes are uh, here. I should have taken their gold. I, I guess I still can. Um, the one we named, whose name I forget, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> chat. Bill Kinzar? Bill Kinzar, yeah. He, he had all the gold. I, I, I think He's so. already in the tavern, though. Uh, but now, he, th now they're on him, so we can go get it if we need it later. Great. Uh, anyway, I wanted to go get, to the tavern and, and yeah. the rest of my second party, <laughs> which is Thief 2. Oh, the order is weird here. Mage yeah. 2 and Bishop 2, which is wrong, but I'll fix it. Uh, I'm in. I'm in almost level 3. You're like so familiar with this that you know like what part of the text you need to like look at. <laughs> yeah, I do. To know. Look at this. Look I'm this. just seeing like text just it's like. Bishop needs yes. two experience. Got it. To make the next level. Oh, that's okay. That's not. I mean, that'll be super easy, barely inconvenient, or um, party wipe trying to get those two two experience. Three cups, uh, saying wizardry six, seven, eight remaster is a possibility. Eight could work much better by fixing encounter rate and getting rid of enemy level scaling. Well, the the company line is, of course, we would love to work on any of those things, and we yeah. can't say that we're gonna. Uh, obviously, um, if that's something you're interested in, if you're interested in us doing more wizardry stuff, please tweet it, uh, buy, tell your friends about it. Buy our it. game. Yeah, and the, honestly, the success of our yeah. early access campaign is going to indicate what we're going to get to do with this stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we're dealing with some small humanoids. We will... Oh, it's a surprise round. Even better. The Real Fippin said they read that the bonus points when rolling for characters is maxed on Apple, so no quote-unquote god rolls. The, they the they mechanism for determining... A 58 on NES only once? Yeah, so 58? the the mechanisms for determining what you roll when you're creating a character are completely different on Apple II uh, versus NES. Gotcha. And uh, the highest roll on the Apple II is a 29. I think you can actually roll a straight 60 <laughs> on the NES, but it's exceptionally wow. rare. Nice. That's impressive. Um, but again, like, your stats go up kind of so fast. It almost like I, I do discourage people from like like I, it's fun to roll characters. It's fun to roll characters to try to get like really powerful characters. But mm -hmm. if you just want to play the game, like a ten is a is an okay roll. Sure, it's, it's really not that bad. Sure, I guess it's one of those things where it just makes you feel yep better. <laughs> that might be oh boy. Crazy. Eight, seven, now, six, five, four, three, right. two, one. So, so on the Apple II, that should only happen mm -hmm. about one out of every four steps. It looks like it's happening oh, you mean, every step yeah. here. So yeah. this is a situation where one, 
Yes. Oh, and now they're back up in town, so now they're not going to lose. Town automatically removes poison. Oh. So okay. on the Apple II, and it was carried over to the NES, but on the Apple II, that was a memory constraint. They stored they the off. some information in the same location where they stored your poison while you were in the dungeon, so they had to wipe your poison when you went back to town. That's hilarious. Uh, so then... Um, is the other option of let's say you're so far away and you don't want to walk in to tear your characters who's poisoned, couldn't you just leave your character in the dungeon? You can't because it's not an option in this version of the game. That's something we added to our game. Oh. So I in our was... game, um, in terms of managing your party in the dungeon, we sort of open that up a little bit. Okay. And you can leave your entire party behind, which this game supports. Or you can leave an individual member of your party behind. So you, so we you can't, can't do, it do in that this one. In this game, yes. Okay. We would have to wipe or just return to town without our party. There is no other option. <laughs> the thief gets poisoned. He's like, I'm sorry, I just got to kill everyone. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, the idea of our adjustment to that of allowing you to sort of leave a character who's paralyzed or poisoned or incapacitated and just say, hey, we're going to come back for you later. Well, it lets you do something, too, which is it does make the game slightly easier. Like you saw, when I recovered our party uh, just a moment ago, mm -hmm. I had to make room in our party for them. Yes. So in our version, which is a little bit of an easier solution, you can take a full party of their location, pick up the dead guys, and leave some of your party there, but then they'll be there but little. Oh, so you're just switching yeah. out. So you still have the same like number of spaces of character slots. Yes. But it makes it easier to sort of switch out who is in the active party. Yep. Nice. Yeah, Rex R1, that's, that sounds convenient. Dispel some skeletons. Skeletons are a scary encounter early. Mm -hmm. Not for level two, for level one characters for sure. That art's pretty cool though. But I'm still gonna cast some how he does. All right, we blew up a bunch of them with our dispel. That's good. Sweet. Nice. Come on, thief! You're doing real terrible at disarming these. Let's let's get your act together here. Sweet. A dagger. We're not going to find any useful gear on the first war. Um, Rexar was going to ask uh, in the new version, mm -hmm. in our version, the awesome version. <laughs> um, they're all awesome. Uh, how do they search in a cell where they suspect my dead party might be? Yeah, so we're, we're hearing a lot of people say that the way we did this is confusing and we're trying to figure out how to make it a little more easy to understand. So yes. there's, the way you do it is you, you go to camp and there will be a message that indicates, hey, there's some, there's some non-party characters in your location. Got it. Um, once you're there, you press the camp button again and it, it's called, we call it the, the party options. It brings up another menu where you can add and remove characters from your party. Okay. You also will use that menu to return to town if you want to leave your party in the dungeon. But yeah, everybody's a little confused by it. So we're, we're yeah. going to work on better messaging. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember if it was even possible or if we were able to do anything with like on the map to sort of add. We, we were talking about, you know. Uh, stunner. Nice. Sweet. No, we'll leave the skeleton. So now, what's the what's the benefit or um, of of not benefit? What's what's the situation about fighting friendly monsters? Uh, so Is the it, only thing it does in this game, or at least in the Apple II game, it makes it, mm -hmm. it rolls a die and sees if it changes the alignments of your character. Oh, um, so like good characters could become evil, quote unquote. Correct. If they start fighting friendly. Correct. Would an evil character become good if they? Don't fight? That is the case in some versions of Wizardry, but Friendly. not the Apple II version. Got it. Interesting. Nine damage! That is not appropriate, scruffy man. <laughs> yes, it was always my habit to, quote, remember where you died. Yes. The Real Fippin's asking, do wiped characters left in the dungeon in your version lose items from monsters taking their items? They do, but nobody likes it, so we're talking about maybe putting an old school option in to turn that off. Got it. Lose 
use items from monsters taking them. That's brutal. Oh, so little hit points. Man, this is a scary fight. I'm out of spells. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. Oh, he ran. Run, Sweet. run. Yay, we killed the last one. Nice. Oh, no, no, we killed the last what? awake one. Oh, still dangerous. <laughs> Come on. Ah, die. Thank goodness. Okay, that was that was dicey. Do we have enough to... That was good XP, so we're going to go back. We're probably all going to be level 3 now. Whew, that was good. And we don't get... And we don't heal up from rusting in the stables. You can, like, but it costs money. Okay, so it's paying for the... So we're not doing it because we're conserving money for now. Got it. So for now, we're just going to be spell yep, curing it's, it's kind of a slog, but it's how you do this game. Slumming it in the stables. Got it. All right. Fighter and, level three. Now, isn't wasn't there also something with the um, sleeping in the stables versus the higher cost... In or whatever that that has to do with your age, the vitality, or whatever. Yeah. So there was a system which in the also Apple II game. isn't explained particularly. Not well. at all. Okay. So your character actually has an age, and your age influences. Um, I haven't really showcased it yet, but every time you go up a level, uh -huh. you have a chance to increase a stat, mm -hmm. and you have a chance, a much smaller chance, to decrease a stat. Your age sort of affects that. So the older sure. your character is the more likely the, the status to go down or rather than go up. Brutal. Um, in the Apple II version, the system was in place, and there are things that uh, impact how your character ages, but it was not connected up to the inn. Okay. That, is, that does not affect your age in any way. Okay. We changed that. Got it. So now when you stay at the inn, you age just a little bit. But we've also mm. reframed that system just to yes. try to make it a little more clear. We, we call it Vim now. Yes. And it sort of represents your character's like life energy. Right, which shows me Because age is a little confusing. Because like, right. you, you age when you leave a party in the dungeon. Or you age when your character is revived. And you it gets age all like, when you change classes, from And you could be like, else. I, I have this like 400 year old human. And it doesn't make any sense. So we just, we changed to Vim. And it represents the, the, the range of Vim is 100% is the max any character could be. Uh -huh. And 0% is... Well, your character is aged and you're, you're experiencing the maximum penalty you could experience. Right. <laughs> um, okay, we are all level three. I'm going to do a quick heal here. But I want to see if we learned Dilto. Rakshwar is saying, yeah, it would be cool if we could recover yeah. the stolen items from those monsters when you fight them. That would make it somewhat more fair. That, I mean, that would be awesome. I don't know. That seems like a bunch of extra work, obviously. The, getting the information stored. Well, for, I mean, just keep telling us stuff like that. I mean, we're sure. listening to everything everybody's saying. That would be. That would definitely be cool. Okay, so technically, now that we're three, we could start yes. grinding on Murphy if we wanted to. Cool, cool, cool. Real Fipping says we love the fact that the music in your version is reminiscent of the NES version. Would we consider an option to enable NES music? Uh, how... Well, we can't comment on that right now, but okay. you know, we've, we've heard the feedback about that. I'm sorry, there's a whole lot we can't talk about. Yes. But, um, we are we like the music too, the how about that? Yes. <laughs> yes, they say they love the music in the new version. It's so epic. We're happy with it. All right, so should we? Let me go. So what are you so, considering? The last time I did this, I got let me let me make sure I know how to navigate the darkness because I screwed that up last time. Oh, okay. with and I want Murphy. to be able to do that. And then if I'm comfortable navigating the darkness, we'll fight Murphy. Should I should I map this out? Okay, yeah. So I'm going north north. Oops, I had an encounter. Start over. Because isn't getting to Murphy isn't that? You have to go, you have to uh, wrap around on the map? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That was another thing east. that I 
Went through the door into the garden. I'm going east, and this is the eastmost side of the Got map. It. I'm going to walk through this hidden door here. I'm now, walk that four steps, door, and now I've hit a teleporter. So now I'm in a different room. Oh, I'm so lost. Uh, but I'm going to go south here so that I can go around this loop and into this dark area. It's dark. And from here, I'm going to turn right and walk until I hit a wall. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to turn left. And walk. Okay, there's a door there. There's not a door there in the apple tree letters, and that's why I was confused. I'm gonna walk okay. south until I hit another wall, and then I'm gonna be. I'm gonna walk out. Okay, so we know how to do it. Cool. We can go fight Murphy. Wait, did you just did you just like go in and then circle back? Mm -hmm. Just to prove that you could. I wanted to make sure, like, because okay. last time I got stuck because oh, right. the, the door is not on the apple tree version. Ah. That's what confused me. Oh, I so see. So now that I figured out there's a door there. That's crazy. We can fight Murphy and get back. The important thing is getting back. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's see it. Oh, he's friendly. Yeah, he's, we'll come back. <laughs> oh, so if you try to fight him when he's friendly, is that that's different from? It's the same. Oh. It's the same as any encounter. Oh yeah. All right. So I also had fun animating this guy. This is great. You did have a lot of fun with this guy. It was definitely. Uh, so Murphy. Uh, is worth a dispro disproportionate amount of experience for this floor. Okay. Um, he will never drop a treasure chest. He's been specifically uh, programmed not to. Got so you always get just a little bit of gold for fighting. There's a good amount of gold too. Um, he only does two damage with any attack. Okay. But his AC is really, really high. And okay. his health is really, really high. Got it. And he recovers one health a turn. So I that's what that. makes him hard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have uh, kill him fast. We're gonna have our priest. Priest? Uh, no, who knows? Dilto. Mage does, right? He's gonna cast Dilto on him, and that should reduce his AC a little bit. So that'll let us hit him more easily. We're gonna do it twice. Uh, a new type century is saying that they remember reading an interview with Robert Woodhead where he said that this NES release was his favorite version of the original Wizardry and made his uh, made his recent tweet about our newly early access version quite special. Yeah, we've been working he's, closely yeah. with him. We, we talk to him about once a month. Um, he's a real nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he remembers so much about it. I was so impressed when I talked with him. Yeah. Like the things he was pulling off the top of his head about what was in this game. That's pretty amazing. Um, Real Fippin's asking, are there any maxes, maxes set on levels? Programming in 255 or... Uh, so, six? yes, but probably not the way you think. So in the original Apple version, mm -hmm. you could level forever. And oh, you, you wouldn't because the, 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 the requirement for each level went up so high, mm -hmm. you probably couldn't get a really high-level character without cheating or hacking or whatever. Um, but if you did, it would just start to break stuff because okay. it would have a, a, an overflow error. Uh, in our version, we clamped your experience. Okay. We clamped it to 10 million or 9 million, 999,999. What that does is it gives you an effective max level, but it's different per class. Um, and I think it means like, the Lord or is only going to be maybe like level 29 oh, right. um, and like a thief is going to be like level 59 or something like that. I gotcha, don't remember gotcha. the exact numbers. I'll, I'll, uh, if you're really interested in, tweet it at me and I'll, I'll send that information out. But uh, yeah, so different, different max level per class, but still maxed ultimately. Nice. Way more than you're going to need or want to do. <laughs> right. Cybergirl, this is a fantastic comment. This is the ghost of the first guy who was crushed to death by a Murphy bed. <laughs> uh, Robert Woodhead actually said Murphy is named for a friend of his who helped test the game. Was that it? Yeah, nice. uh, who he played D&D &D with. Oh, sweet. Sweet. For everyone who is, uh, who has played our remake and who has encountered Murphy's ghost and that encounter, Hopefully you can appreciate the ghostly attack <laughs> towards the screen 
that is very much inspired directly from the library ghost in Ghostbusters. That was something that I had an idea of trying to make work and was like, hey, uh, Ian, what if, uh, what, if we, what if we have two different versions of this character? And I was like, oh man, what are you, what are you trying to do? And I was like, I think this would be cool. Let's do it. And now you know why our animations aren't finished. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. Theory Cup says one thing that they didn't get from playing our remakes was the consume some vim. So that's, we were just talking about this a moment ago. Yeah, so. so hopefully you explain that or you, yeah, they're asking what's vim and probably explain somewhere and I missed it. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, it's one-to-one -one equivalent to the age system in the original game. Right. We just re-characterized it a little bit. So things Flavor that cost you vim are getting revived, changing classes, um, leaving your party in the dungeon, gotcha. sleeping at the inn, anything that would have aged your character in the original game now just reduces your vim slightly. So it's like draining your life force to a certain extent. Healed. Oh, we won. Okay. So 741 experience, which Sweet. is good, oh, is but it's not amazing. Oh, it's not a lot. Okay. That seems like a lot to me. It is a lot. I kind of feel like Murphy, you know, I don't know if I should say this. I feel like it might be like a newbie trap because it, it does feel like a lot of experience, but look how much time we just spent fighting that. Okay, so you could go to sense. the next floor, like you have to be a little stronger to go to the next floor, but you could go to the next floor and fight like a big group of enemies and they you would can get, also be a lot faster. of experience and you can do it faster. Makes sense, that. makes sense. Um, especially once you get to like level five or so when you start to get the, the group healing spells. And now like, the, like there's a big long fight and even so, I, I have to cast all my healing spells again. Right. So it's just a, it's a slow loop. Right. Even though the experience is quite good. Makes sense. It's, it's useful. Like where I use Murphy mm -hmm. is like, oh crap, a character's dead and I can't afford to revive him. So I'll just go grind Murphy a little bit to get the money to revive a character. Got it. Because it's the, the relative safe. It's pretty safe. Because of the low damage. It's just slow. Yeah. Makes sense. Real Fit been saying that NES has Easter eggs on the map, if they recall correctly, for the initials of the programmers. The Apple II version definitely did the, the, the layouts NES. of um, right, but they're saying the NES they thought, but maybe those levels were replaced on the NES, I okay. believe. So if there are, it's not something I'm aware of. Okay. Oh, our fire is almost level four. And Raxfar One, are you saying until you get downstairs and run into three groups of creeping coins? Are you saying that? as a response to, what, XP or? Yeah, yeah, like Creeping Coins are uh, way more efficient than Murphy. Okay, gotcha. Yes, XP, that's what you're saying, cool. That is another one of the enemies that I am um, still in the process of working out the animations and the actions for that, but I think I'm gonna have something pretty fun for that. Bishop can't cast priest spells yet. No. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just healing up here. I am healing. I do have a lot of gold. Getting all Maybe the... I should buy some better gear. No, I don't have a lot of gold actually. All right, cuckoo. Um. Let's go fight Murphy again. Friendly Murphy again. <laughs> He's very friendly Murphy. <laughs> now, interestingly, on the Apple II, mm -hmm. um, on the NES version, you always encounter exactly one Murphy. On the Apple II version, I think mm -hmm. I think our version does not do this, but on the Apple II okay. version of the game, he, he's treated as a normal encounter. Now, Murphy has a 20% chance to appear with another Murphy, which means on the Apple II version, you're you're going to encounter two of them some of the time. That's might be eighty percent chance. Might be eighty percent chance to appear huh. another copy of. That's interesting. <laughs> Super friendly Murphy. All right. So now, see oh, that's an unidentified it. art. Man, look at that. 
That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the characters, especially Murphy's ghost here, um, a lot of what we were trying to do for me for the animation and the actions was again to look at all of the, sort of the representation of the art for the characters throughout all the versions we were able to see them in. Um, and we tried to figure out what best poses to take and how to how to represent them. Um, and keep them as true as we can to some of these poses and images. Uh, and definitely with Murphy here, with uh, his sort of hunched over half bow kind of situation, that was something we were very much trying to uh, maintain in his character. It's a very iconic image. Real Fippin says there was a square on the final floor that you could never get to. The warp back to the top. Is it possible to get to the square in your version for like achievements or something? I'm not sure. Um, so the final floor on the Apple II version, again, everything I know mm -hmm. is about the Apple II version uh, for the most part. There are some narrow corridors that you walk through with a bunch of teleporter puzzles in them. And mm -hmm. everywhere that's outside of those corridors, um, is a teleporter back to the first floor. Okay. So if you try to teleport out of bounds in that area, first of all, you can't teleport to floor 10, but if you get teleported on floor 10 by like a chest, for example, mm -hmm. you will likely hit one of those teleporters and return to floor one. Uh. I don't think there's any area that you can actually get to that's out of bounds on that floor. A lot of it is just that teleporter stuff. Got it. Um, we actually added one small change we made was there was on the Apple II version no way for you to get back to town after you've mm -hmm. defeated Wordna without teleporting. Okay. So we added a back door that will let you get back to the start of that zone, which has a teleporter Got back it. to back to town. Nice. Because it would, you know, like the, the, there's a uh, would you call it a soft lock? I guess it is a soft lock if you if you go there and you defeat Word Now, but you're out of spells oh, and, and can't, you can't teleport yeah. back, and you're just like, well, I guess I'm in the dungeon now. <laughs> I live here. <laughs> this is my home. <laughs> I am the new Word Now. Yes, three cups. Yes, Vim replace age system. You can see the Vim percentage on characters once it reaches zero percent would be the equivalent of characters dying of old age. Correct. They do not die. No. It's okay. it's just that they are then at the point where they're receiving the minimum bonus to stats when they level up. Got it. They're also asking, is there a way to restore Vim? There is not. It is permanent for now. Just like in real life, kids. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's like they're getting PTSD so bad they're not going to go back down in the dungeon. Now, oh man, that hurts great. When you run out of vitality, your character dies, which happens when you when that's you try a, to revive. A stat. The that's yeah, right. Okay. And if your character's level is reduced below one, they die. <laughs> Wait, you can have. I'm sorry, you can have a. Uh, Level debuffs? Mm hmm. Oh my god. Oh, wait, that's probably like the vampires and stuff. Yes. Uh -huh. Terrible. We're talking about also maybe having a, an old school option to let you recover lost levels in the oh, Temple yeah. of Camp for a lot of money. But our economy is a little broken now because we don't have. There's a fixed encounter on floor four that has a really valuable drop, mm -hmm. and we don't have any limiter on it right now. Oh, so you can um, just go and just turn so you that can, out. You can really get a lot of money. So we need to fix the economy first before we start doing stuff that uh, would mm -hmm. require the economy to work like that. I mean, if we were able to do something to... to Whoops, I don't know why my priest... Uh -huh. I, I inspected it with my priest. Yes. And he got shot with a crossbow bolt and <laughs> almost died. Oh, oh my. Man, one hit point. But if we could do something to sort of to add time to just make it more of a... A little bit more of a slog. Like if you if you are gonna churn through and, and grind through stuff, sort of metagame the system. If it just is a little more taxing, so to speak, that might be like a way to 
even it out? What are you saying? <laughs> just saying, like you said, the the um, the item on whatever floor that's. Uh, so the way that works, so it's an interesting, it's an interesting conundrum. I'm saying, like, leave it in there, but make it more. Right, right, right. Well, let me explain. To let do. me explain. Yes. Um, the way that fixed encounters work, like that encounter on the uh -huh. Apple II, is there is a set number of them that happen ever. Okay. Oh. Every time you have the encounter, it's decremented. If the encounter is zero, it's replaced with a different encounter, and that's true for that encounter oh, okay. on the Apple II. We do not know. Nobody has a clean copy of the Apple II game. In the Apple II game, the save data is the same as your disk data. Okay. So it is unknown to us what the initial value of that number of encounters should be. It might be one. It might be a hundred. We don't know. So for now, we're, we're discussing internally, what should we set these numbers to? But in early right. access, we just let you have the encounter over and over. So at some point, during development, we're going to fix those number of encounters at some number, but we don't. We're, we're still having the conversations about what is the number, what is okay. a good number. Gotcha. Uh, the real Fitman is asking if we are adding more items to find in our version, or if we're just sticking to the Apple version. Uh, we are not currently planning to change the item table at all. We might do something, but again, I have to be very careful what I say. We're not promising things. This is internal conversations. What we are doing is on our public roadmap. But we might do something like we might take some of the emptier parts of the levels and put something interesting there for you to go find because there are some big, empty, nothing bits of the levels. Excellent. Uh, let's see. What level are we now? Still four, four huh? yeah. That's probably true for everybody. Well, I guess we'll just keep going to Murphy for a little bit because that seems to be going pretty smooth. Cool, cool. Um, once we hit five, we can start to go to the other levels. That makes that pretty easy. I'll say. Um, speaking of of finding items with our version, um, I have another. Steam key that I can. Ooh. Or maybe I'll make it. Mm, I'll do a good old games version. Here we go. If anybody is interested in getting themselves a copy of not the NAS version, but our version, the Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord, our early access version on good old games. I'm going to be dropping it into the chat in just a moment. Just making sure that I'm copying this correct. Max Horror one says, I hate to say it, but I like the texting of Level Up in the Apple II version, where it decides what traits go up or down instead of selecting to place bonus points yourself. Well, you can turn that on. You can turn that on in the old school options. Right, so use the original of, system. Right. I think that's that something system that is still present in our game. Made sure to to keep all of that stuff intact. Yeah. And our approach is generally like if we make a departure that's even a little bit significant like that, we will make sure there's an option so that you can experience it as the original game. Right. All right, kids in the stream, grab this code and run yourself over to good old games and get yourself a wizardry. I'm gonna share our extra life link. Probably good to talk about. Ooh, I can do that. So we usually do a Saturday stream the first Saturday of every month. The first Saturday of November this year is going to be uh, Extra Life Game Day. So we're gonna be streaming uh, for 36 hours. We're going to be streaming from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday, November 3rd, Saturday, November 4th, and Sunday, November 5th. Not just me and Justin, everybody at Digital as Switch. Much I'll as, be here a lot. Justin as much as you some. want us to. Just... Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a fundraising yes. drive. It's a, it's a fundraiser for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, so it's good cause. Justin's going to share the link in the chat. Right. Um, please consider donating. Tune in for then uh, and watch us 
you know, go nuts streaming for weeks. See whatever weeks. shenanigans we're all going to get up to. Uh, we don't. We have our internal Excel list that is going to continue to be populated with what games and people are going to decide. At um, the last minute, like I mean, sure. we won't know what we're doing until the day before, but we, right. we'll give you a ballpark. Yes, and some of it might just maybe on the day it'll be like, oh, <laughs> we're gonna so and so brought in such and such game. Let's just throw it on and see what we have. Maybe I'll just I'll, I'll replay through all the Batman games. <laughs> we're not. You could if that if you it is what you want to do. You you can definitely. I can do. That. do I could. I could. Do Blaster Master again, but this time give myself the time to finish it all. Okay, that is an option. That could be an option. I love that game. Thank you, Rexra, for buying our game on Steam. We very much appreciate it. It's viewers and players like you who keep us able to do our job. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I hate being kind of a shill for the product, but uh, I mean, it, the more successful we are in early access, the more cool stuff we're going to be able to do yes. with this game. And with games like it. So. Yes, vote with your wallets, vote often. I guess, I don't know. We appreciate it though. Internesis, if that's your name, congratulations on getting the GOG code. Enjoy it. Hit us up with any uh, suggestions or whatnot, feedback. Believe we don't want to hear about any bugs though. I'm just kidding. We're we're, all, we, we're, it's been super, the community has been really it. useful for helping us track right. some of that stuff down. And we have uh, there's places to log that on in forums, right in Steam, and in we're reading the forums. Games. Y you can tweet at us. Yes. Oh wow, I'm going really fast here. We're so we've only there. gotten down to level three so far, and we've gotten two parties killed there. So I started over. <laughs> That's the way to do it. See, a thousand XP before our mage is five, which is when we're going to so continue this journey. So everyone is level four so far? Yeah. On the path to level five. I think my bishop just got pre spells, though, so that will speed up our healing a little bit. Got it. Oops. Uh, and that's right. Uh, he does have quick spells. Why can't he? Maybe he didn't learn Dios yet. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> uh, just make sure. Uh, read? What's it? Read. Cleric. He does not know Dios. No! <laughs> All right. Well, let's toss our priest back into the stables. <laughs> Man, we should have, um, we, guys, send us more money, and then we could make uh, a horse that just chills in the stable with you. No? We could. If we got more money, I don't think that's a good thing I to mean, spend it on. <laughs> sure, I agree. That's <laughs> definitely not the bang for your buck, but it would be entertaining to uh, have a horse that you could then, uh, you could name so you could snuggle up to such and such horse, whatever, horsey. You call it Epona. Yes. There was, uh, in one of my D&D my &D type games, uh, I was playing a, a little goblin thief character, and there was a situation where we stumbled across some structure that was on fire, and the DM proceeded to explain how we could sort of see there was an animal in one of the, the side sections and I was like, we gotta go do something. And the other characters are like, eh, I don't really think we need to do anything. And I was my, playing my character is this crazy little goblin character. So I like scurried into the stable and ended up saving this little pony, um, which we then tried to figure out what we we're gonna name it. And I think we use one of those goofy name generators said and asked what, a, what would a goblin name a, a pony and it came up with Gaboni. <laughs> so we had a horse named Gaboni for a while. And then my, my goblin character died. That's so. just a portmanteau of yes. goblin. Yes, and pony. pony, exactly. Which is, yes, it was excellent. Um, the uh, early access version, the roster can hold 20 characters, oh, yeah. just like the Apple II version. 
We've heard a lot of people uh, complaining about the roster size, uh, which is very easy for us to adjust. So uh, don't be surprised if we tweak that in an update. Nice. Third Cups is saying, thank you for working on this awesome remake. I hope there is enough interest in this project to make future Wizardry projects a possibility. We hope so as well. <laughs> we would be so into that. Um, That's what we're here for. They're asking if we think this is attracting younger gamers as well, or just nostalgic old gamers like yourself slash us slash everybody. Um, you know, it, it definitely skews towards people who are familiar with the property, um, mm -hmm. especially in the U.S. because there hasn't been a release of this game mm -hmm. uh, or a game in this series really in, in the U.S. Not many, for sure, mm -hmm. in, in the in the last twenty years, fifteen sure. years. Um, but I have seen, you know, I've been paying attention to a lot of people streaming the game, and I have some seen some younger people who are excited to play this game mm -hmm. just because of the impact it's had yeah. on on gaming and RPGs as a whole. Yeah. Um, and some of them are really into it, and some of them, you know, died in their first encounter, and like we're like, I'm never playing this again. So, yeah. You know, and th th it's kind of what we expected. <laughs> yeah. And um, again, we're going to keep making yes. tweaks to try to appeal to both audiences, but we are preservationists, so. Predominantly, we want to make sure that you know the property is treated respectfully, and to the extent that we can provide it, you're having the original experience if that's the experience you want. Yes, which is one of the reasons why, with our game, we have the actual Apple II code, and everything is is running right there in the corner, and you can bring that up, see the original game as you were playing through the remake in the background. I mean, uh, I can't overstate how cool I think that is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm the programmer on the project, or one of the programmers on the project. Mm -hmm. But um, you don't get to say this a whole lot, where like, there's a lot of uh, people, people release collections of old school games or whatever, and they're like emulations, or oftentimes they're work-alikes, especially mm -hmm. if they have a modern version. Like, yes. oh, I'm pointing at this, this is not our version. Yes. But like, like our game, uh, if there's a modern version, a lot of times it will be um, a work-alike. Yes. Like, I, I, I know this game well, I'm just going to make a new game and make it kind of feel like the old game. Our game uh, is one among few that is actually a port. We actually yes. ported the Pascal code that was driving the original Apple II experience to PC. And that is the, I mean, we've modified it pretty heavily since, but mm -hmm. that is the, what's driving the core of our, our game. It's still about 70% the, the source from the Apple II version. Nice. Yep, Rockstar One says they played the original Wizardry on their Apple II Plus in 1981. Real Flippin says they played the NES version so much. Remember calling Nintendo Power and letting the pro player know tips and secrets that they found, like the Silver Gauntlets. Oh, come on, die. Yep, Rockstar was saying they love that we can bring up the, uh, the original, takes them right back. Okay, let's see what happened here. Even the green color. That was my monitor back then. Yeah. I was super jazzed when we... <laughs> a lot of people are our... asking to adjust the color. No, of the... I, yeah. I we, we might be doing that. <laughs> I agree. I think that's fun. I, I was I was jazzed when we, we put out our trailer. Um, I thought our trailer was pretty slick. Um, showing all the original Apple II green text and, and UI and everything and how it just sort of blended into what we'd make. I um, thought that was pretty sweet. Hell is real. Saying they hope the Tiny Toons University does well enough that Tiny Toons Adventures game collection for us to become a reality. Wandroid is like that. It's a clone similar, but the dungeon is very different. I'm not familiar with Wandroid. Yeah, I don't know that one. Wandroid. Hmm. I'll have to look that up. And Ternissa says, I've wanted to play. Wait, whoops. Wanted to play Wizardry with graph paper at my side ever since I fell in love with Etrian Odyssey over 15 years ago. And I always struggled to decide which version would be the right choice. So I was thrilled when y'all dropped this modern but still accurate and respectful remake project out of nowhere. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, stay tuned. It's, it's going to keep getting better. Yes. Yeah, I rather like the Adrian Odyssey game as well. Right. Was that the one with um, on the DS 
Yeah, where you and had the, drive out the yeah, that was cool. a really Thought cool feature. <laughs> uh, yeah, no pre spells, so we're just gonna. All right, our this fighters is... are level five, which means they get an extra attack. That's really, really good. All right, three cups. Enjoy your food. We will try not to get wiped again. Uh, the real fan is asking, would we be able to add an option to make the Apple screen, quote unquote, output to a full screen on a different monitor? On a different monitor. That's a little tricky. Huh. Um, you're the first person I've heard as a yeah. lot of people are asking us to put it, just, just to have screen. an option to have it full screen. Uh -huh. And um, we can definitely do that in the dungeon, although we might need to overlay some of our UI over mm -hmm. top of it because that's how it's controlled quite a bit. Um, on a second monitor is kind of more involved and I think, that, I apologize, <laughs> like the, the audience for that will probably be a little small. So like, we would want to spend our initial resources on on some, uh, you know, improving the, the experience in, right. in different ways than that. But you know, to send us a tweet, we're we're listening to everything. Right. All right. Uh, we're gonna go to level two, so I'm actually gonna. Oh, level five now. Cool. Is everyone level five, or is this we're in the process? I think process my of... bishop didn't make it, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Roxroar, um, you can totally be nitpicky about this, <laughs> um, but they're saying that the menu that set, the menu says going to the dungeon is at the quote edge of town, but our interface shows the dungeon entrance in the center of town. I think that was just a, <laughs> I think that was just a, a visual choice. Uh, aesthetically, it just looks better to have this entire town. Well, we there's there's some precedent. So it, it's actually a big argument among the community, and I didn't oh. know that. Okay. There's some precedent for what we did. Like we did some uh -huh. R and D for for uh, the look and feel of the games, yes. and uh, ours is more akin to. Like the novelization and the anime, okay. but there's you know the other, there's the other school of thought that either the dungeon is uh, out on the outskirts of town or even not near the town at all. Right. And and especially in Japan, I had no idea this was going. But in Japan, people are like mad at us that the way we did it. So yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> can't uh, please everybody all the time, wherever that is. Uh, did I? Yeah. Stay at the end. Okay. So we're gonna go to floor three now. Interesting. Here, floor two. And uh, actually, I saw that I learned Lomua, so I'm going to cast Lomua. Which means we now can see further. Ooh, look at that. Look at that draw distance. Um, and the reason we're going to level two is we're just going to collect some more keys. There's no, no, no stairs. No. Oh, that's a big encounter. All right. Oh boy. So I'm gonna fight. Oh, look at those gas clouds. Uh, it's a surprise round. Let's go to the slimes. So our mage should now know <laughs> Mahalito. That's great. This is like a big mm -hmm. fire? Lark? So it's going to hit all the enemies in the group, and Sweet. that's going to be, oh, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep. Okay, good. <laughs> Actually, I think I can't go to sleep. I think you're immune once you're level five. Oh, really? Yep. What? Interesting. I am noticing, though, I didn't heal my back row, which is not a good approach for this floor. Well, yeah. Uh, so Bishop is badly injured. Sure. Let's uh, heal him up. Try to keep everybody like above 10 maybe. Uh huh. Got a fire, and a priest, thief, bishop, mage. Man in robes. Oh man. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> It's, no, trapless. it's a poison needle. That was not trap. 
So that time it was being there we go. truthful. On a silvery disc stands a statue of a frog wearing a red and blue cape. Mm -hmm. The statue animates and shakes its legs while it yells, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah! Will you search? <laughs> I mean, we have to. Okay. What kind of statue? So, that's exactly. So then, okay, so what's the, the reason why we would not want to search? Uh, I always think that's really, really funny because it is a staple like, of these kinds of games where you have these encounters and you're matter, offered like options. And yes. This is like this is true in Edward Odyssey. Edward Odyssey is a great example of this. And there's always like, hey, there's this interesting thing here. Do you want to engage with it? And I have no idea why you would never ever yeah. say yes. And sometimes it's like, oh, it messed you up real good. You shouldn't have done that. But it's like, who's going to say no? <laughs> yeah. Oh my, the encounter rate seems yeah. really high in this game, too. Zombies, oh, that's not good. All right, we might be going back to the first war soon. Oh, did we get a surprise round? Mm -hmm. Hardly War Again 71 says they missed a lot of the 8 bit era because Dad chose the wrong home computer. Oh no. That's fine. Why did my spell not go off? Oh man, we got a zombie guy. Did I, I did I misclick? Yeah. Alright, we got the zombies. See, like that was 500 experience for a Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Chill. That was what? 500 experience. <clears throat> that was 500 experience for a single encounter, which is almost as much yes. as Murphy and yes. very fast. Nice. Is what I was trying to say before I got into four encounters in a row. Uh -huh. Right, so Rexwar is saying that this is another thing that they found a little bit frustrating with our restoration. When disarming a trap, they liked having to choose it from the full list and being told by the game that I should remember what my thief said it was the first time. That's an interesting observation. Like hmm. we, uh, you know, because right, we just the way that it works is you can omit. choose it from the list, but you have to opt into that. So like, we thought it would be easier for because we didn't, we didn't, we we're in the habit of, or or one of our design philosophies is uh, making sure there's less hidden information. So we wanted to indicate, uh, you know, what. So you wouldn't have to remember it, but if that's something you really want, it might be something we can do as an old school option. option. Right. That's the first time I've heard that feedback. Also. Yeah. Like for me, I feel like it's um, giving giving the player all the information about what the game is doing is always good, in my opinion, just because then you can make an informed decision on what you're going to do. So the way that list works in our uh -huh. game is you can technically identify with multiple characters, although in practice nobody ever does, and it would be populated with every every trap that the characters think that the chest is. Got it. So, so then the fact that if you have your thief who would have a better chance, there's going to be less options because they're more... They sort of weeded out the... Like thematically, they've kind of like weeded out. Right. So the, the thief's options. always going to be best at it. So you, mostly you just inspect with your thief. Right. Um, but if you use like a fighter or somebody with a lesser chance, they're going to be like, I don't know. Here's every option that I think it might be. Well, and the then, fighter might say like, the thief would be like, oh, it's a poison needle. And the fighter might go, oh, it's it's a crossbow bolt. Mm -hmm. And both will be on the list. Okay. But it will tell you that, well, the, the thief probably got it right. And the fighter's probably got it wrong. Got it. And you can get a consensus, but also inspecting the chap has a chance to set it off. Sure. Let's see, does my bishop know? I don't know. Dio shit. <laughs> Why? It's <laughs> so annoying. So we got us a statue. We're gonna go get another statue. 
Did I just hear a dog? Sorry, no, I'm sorry, my phone. <laughs> Someone was stopping off at my house. Uh, here, I think so. Yeah, there's no way I would have been able to uh, map any of this with the speed of which you're navigating this what, from you memory. Can't follow that? And then with everything looking exactly oh, the wait. same. Uh oh. We see a statue of a bear on a pedestal. Yes. And I the walls to... are sign reading. I've got a million of them. Will yes. you search? Yes. Yeah, we should yes. search. Okay. Hey, we found a statue. Again, just another statue, says so. Rexfar1 says, I think it goes back to being the person who enjoyed having to map the dungeon out in pencil as well. You have a status page, like on GTA for treasure chests opened, traps disarmed, creatures killed, etc. Of course, when the game is complete, resources and all. We are adding a bestiary, which has a list of the enemies and the floors on which you encountered them and mm -hmm. who encountered them. And... Uh, I think it will have a little bit of information about the treasures they drop. We're talking about expanding that system to be to have more. Yes. But again, follow the roadmaps. The roadmaps are what we are definitely doing. Anything yes. else is pure speculation. <laughs> yes. Hall wish list. This room is a statue of a monster with the body of a chicken and the head of a cat. We sounds familiar, right? Statue yeah. of bronze, lines on an onyx mm -hmm. pedestal. There are unusual runes on a plaque thereon. Yes. We should, we should search? Yes. Okay, okay. We found a key. Sweet. And an encounter, apparently. Oh, boy. Slimy, slimy. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Uh oh. Oh, uh -oh. so much poison. Yeesh. I don't think I can cure poison yet. Two. Sweet. Let's check. We're going to need to. We're going to be in a lot of trouble if we can't. Uh, so we know. We do not know Latimophis. Uh, so we can either try to keep people alive. Uh, like walking and then healing, right? Yeah, which How is far? Be really hard. So I'm going to give this potion to the bishop and hope that it's a potion of Latimophis. Oh my god. It's a potion of curing. So that gives us a little bit of extra stuff. Sure. Let's see if I have any other potions I don't have identified. I don't think I do. So we're going to have to sacrifice someone. <laughs> um, God, why is it one per step? That's so much worse. Or I think we're going to sacrifice the fighter. We might hard, not be able to get back with either of them. Hard choices. This, the poison in this game is it's brutal. brutal. Yeah. <laughs> that is not the way it worked on the Apple II. Ah, 12 steps is not enough. Okay. Got one more heal, and I, gotta, I shouldn't even waste the resources. Yeah. Those guys are not making it back. Yeah. Ah. One. Oh, that wasn't the... Okay, we lost two folks to poison. Um, X cast 13. Um, sort of pausing, if over time, if we add this and that, would that not be wandering too far away from the original game? Well, um, we're never going to add something where we don't, if it's a departure, we don't add an option to turn it off. Right. 
Um, um, all right, well, let's go to the temple camp. God, it's so pricey. Good luck, us. Oh, no. Okay, oh, we got fire three back. Now I have to do it for the fish. Two. Or for. Well, we don't have enough money. Oh, bummer. So we're going to go to the tavern and we're going to put uh, Bill Kanzar in our party. Um, I'm not quite sure if I understand what they were talking about here. They were asking, the real fitness is asking if we were going to keep the bug item number nine. Uh, no, we actually cannot reproduce that. The reason being is because we're using the original source code, but uh -huh. because it's compiled for a different platform, the memory layout is different. So it's actually a tremendous amount of work for us to try to recreate the exact nature of okay, that so bug. I've heard a lot of people are asking about um, cheats and stuff, so we're we're looking into it. But we, we, I, I don't want to set the expectation that we'll be able to do the the identify nine. So bug. what just can you explain a little bit of what that is or what that? Well, it was an overflow error on the okay. original Apple to, or rather it was an out of bounds error where um, you could identify an item that was not in your inventory with the bishop okay. and it would do some stuff and it would stomp over memory and depending on a couple of other things that um, uh, was set up, you could use it to like Max, you get a bunch of experience, for example. Huh. Like, depending on your setup, you could do a lot of different things with it. Oh, people like people can speed run that game in you know 10, 15 minutes because they can crazy it, it complete you know get okay. max level characters like right away. Interesting. Um, Interesting. So we're going to oops. Remove this fellow. We took his money. I'm going to try to revive our priest. Braxwar one is saying a suggestion for our next restoration, Ultima 4. I would love to do Ultima as well. Since they grew up on Ultima 3, but they say that the fourth game was the real game changer for the industry. I mean, keep Oops. making suggestions, keep supporting us. The sky is the limit, so to speak. They say that was the first game that counted ethical behavior for leveling up. <laughs> what What do you mean by that? Explain more of that, Rockstar. Um, to progress in the, I know a little bit about it. I'll let them explain oh, sure. it even better. But to progress in the game, you, you needed to demonstrate that you followed the virtues that were oh, like of your class. Or yeah, something. essentially. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Like the paladin won't level up if they're just beating people up. Left and right. Well, that took all of the money we had made to recover those two characters. So Sweet. that's unfortunate. But now they know how much we love them. Yep. That we much. We didn't gold. delete them like the others. <laughs> oh boy. But it means we uh, we're not really gearing up here much. All right. But we're all level five, right? We are level five. Good. So I so I haven't been paying attention. What levels have you been primarily? We've been almost exclusively on floor. Is that what you're asking? What floors? Yes, we're on? I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Almost exclusively on floor one. Oh, okay. Um, we did dip our toes a little bit into floor two. Got That's it. sort of what we're doing now. Uh, and I'm going to continue to do that to grind kind of quickly. Um, but as you can see, it's risky. I got poisoned and uh, it was the end of my party. Mm -hmm. It was rough. The real thing says, and kids nowadays think Dark Souls is hard. Yeah, really. Well, um, the uh, different kind of challenging. The creators of Dark Souls cite this game as inspiration for yep. their game. Yep. Oh, double ones. Come on, be a little more, please. <laughs> well, that was crummy. We're going to do that again. <laughs> Look at all those hits, though. Everyone's up to 20.
Max Roar once says the joy of this game was that it was constantly hard. That seems to be the case. Well, you don't get your second healing spell until level 7. Jeez. Which is annoying. But level 7 is our next milestone. We're going to stay on floor 2 for a bit um, and try to get our characters level 7. When we're seven, we might try going to floor four and doing some grinding there. All right. So like I, I definitely mentioned over the course of our, um, our development for, for this game, um, very similar vein, um, the Darkest Dungeon games. Um, very punishing and brutal. Um, in terms of going in, trying to survive, and sometimes just like not making it at all. It very much seems like that's the kind of type of game that sprung exclusively from this type. It says it's trapless. I don't believe him though. I'll try Poison Needle. Mm -hmm. It was trapless. Now here's the question. So for all of those I guess if it's an unknown, are there certain traps like setting off poison that would be, or exploding or something that would be more detrimental? So you're like, well, I, I'm gonna just, I don't know what it is, but like, I want to versus, you know, I want to I try against poison because I really don't want to get poisoned. Like, yeah, for sure. Like, definitely, I was. Uh, like, you're just a safe like, bet. To, so. There's a distribution, so each, each, let me see how I can express this. Mm -hmm. Each enemy has a treasure type, mm -hmm. and each treasure type has a set of traps associated with it. So roughly that means that on a given floor, mm -hmm. you can have a good sense of the types of traps you can encounter, although okay. the lower you get, eventually it's just like all the traps. So be. that's why you were saying earlier, it's like if you're on level one or whatever, you know, you know. Yeah, there's like experience. maybe four. So level one could be a poison needle, gas bomb, crossbow bolt, exploding bolt, stunner. It's not a teleporter, it's not mage misery, clerics, uh -huh. crisis, or alarm. None of those can appear on floor uh, one. one. Sure. Um, beyond that, it gets a little more fuzzy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, generally speaking, you if you don't know what the trap type is, you disarm the trap that you think would have the worst impact. And right. clearly, that's poison. Seems <laughs> like it. Like with uh, the exploding trap, is can it? I mean, I guess it can do. Can it do enough damage in one go to just drop a character? Oh yeah. Like, and does that damage scale? Uh, so yes, like, so trap damage actually is determined by the floor you're on. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so exploding trap on level one. Is not as bad as an exploding trap I on see. a lower level. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Real Fippin says, yes, I know when the NES version saves. I used to save scum all the time. That's the way to do it sometimes. Rockstar One says, and of course, later experiences with games taught me that the spells were not specifically helpful to your players, like they weren't meant to, or they weren't meant for in the games world for getting through the dungeon. Interesting. Hey, a successful excursion. <laughs> Good job, us. Let's kill some easy fights on floor one to celebrate. Yeah, scruffy men, you ain't all that anymore. Sweet. See, like this game, so we were talking mm -hmm. earlier about uh, we liked having, to, one of the viewers liked having to remember the trap. Yes. But in this game, when you choose disarm, the option that the character guess is highlighted. It's the same, same system. Oh, so the... <laughs> Is he alive? Okay. <laughs> That's all I that think it's matters. a crossbow trap. Try to disarm it. Nope. <laughs> it's a crossbow trap. Okay.
I imagine there is probably a, a like a sense of like a real sense of accomplishment and like mastery when you first play the game and you are completely unfamiliar with the level layout and you're painstakingly oh that's a lot of fun like, like I really enjoy out. that part and yes. then getting to the point like, where I'm, you're I'm like, not no. showcasing that for the streamers at all but it, right. it is very interesting and it um, helps like like a lot of what we're doing like I said is kind of grinding but it gives you something to focus on like if you're mapping out the floors if you're covering you're every slow. square right. you're going to be an appropriate level well you, you got to stick on floor one a little bit sure. long you know kind of like we did but right um like by the time you've mapped out floor two, you're ready for floor three and right. so forth. Um, yeah, I mean, there's that. And then like, I imagine the idea of taking that time to map everything out, getting yourself to the point of now knowing, oh, going down this hallway is seven this way, four this way, take a left. You know, like once you've, you've mapped it out and you've internalized it, I imagine there's, that's like a, an additional sort of point of uh, mastery. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm navigating pretty Which, fast, right? Like, you yes. have no idea where I'm going. No, right? not at all. You're in wizardry right now. <laughs> I'm in wizardry. Yes. <laughs> it's like the Matrix. Yes. Oh, sweet. oh there we go. I fled. Oh, boy, that could be really bad. Uh, come on, thief. <laughs> oh, Whew. nice. I'm glad he was right, so you, first of all. Right, I was just thinking, <laughs> like, you knew it was a... Yeah, exactly. Rexroar, like Ian said, it helps you memorize the map, and it makes you spend more time on each floor, so you level up at an exactly. appropriate rate. Yep. Uh, makes sense. Why is my... Oh, nice. my party's been reordered. That's part of what's going on okay. here. And fighter, fighter, priest, thief, bishop. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> well, well, I'll take your money. I don't care. Sure. Uh, exploding box. That won't be too bad, even if I don't disarm it. All right, let's do the let's do the bad rhyme. Here we go. A placard near the ground reads, "A dungeon is dark." Uh huh. A placard near the ground reads, "When it is it's not lit." Perfect. Watch out dungeon. or you'll. Watch out or you'll. I'm not gonna step over. There's a pit there. But the the rhyme is uh. funny because um, and I think it's true on the NES game. It certainly was true on the Apple II game. The, the text says, "A dungeon is dark when it is not lit." Uh -huh. Watch out or you'll, and then if you step forward, it just says, a pit. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Proxtrar says it has said that exact thing. For 15 damage. Yeesh. That is not appropriate, buddy. <laughs> How rude. So then, fighting, if you choose to fight friendly monsters, then it, there's a chance I will turn evil. Is there any other potential reward? Like, is there a treasure difference? Is it better? No. no. So, the. the oops. The um, 
the value there is you don't have to have the encounter if you don't want to. Got it. Got it. Um, and while you're grinding, like I, you know, I tend to play good characters in the games I'm playing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to grind faster, play evil characters and sure, just kill everything. Sure. Good max hit point roll there. Uh, Needless to say, if I was driving, we would still be trying to equip the first group at the beginning of the game. Okay, let's see how he did. Now levels looks like. Maybe my bishop level. I think he's a level behind. Not yet. Oh, my maid level. Interesting. <laughs> Rex Roar one says, I always ask, quote, why is it bad for a good character to fight the undead who are friendly? I mean, they're zombies for, for crying out loud. It's interesting how that system works because, uh, you know, like one of the cool things of working on this game is I get to see the guts of how everything works. And yeah. like all this stuff when I was a kid, I was like, oh, this is random, this is random, this is random. I don't yeah. understand this. It, n almost none of it is like it's, right. it's there's, there's really complicated systems yeah. behind everything. I feel like you were like extra nerding out over that stuff. <laughs> like at the beginning of the project when you were like digging into it's, all it was the really code, cool. You were like, oh my gosh! Um, and that's that's fun. It's like look, it's literally looking under the hood yeah. of a game that was like very influential. Uh, but the way the friendly role works is an enemy actually has a class associated with it. I think there's. 12 classes or 16 okay. classes or something like that and each class has a percentage chance of being friendly got it but everything on this floor was just friendly what the heck mm -hmm. literally everything i'm gonna i'm just gonna go back to the previous floor and do that all over again that was a waste <laughs> That's hilarious. this is friendly floor too sure uh, oh, and the reason I'm going up and down the floors the way I am is, I, I alluded to this earlier, but um, these fixed encounters are rolled when you enter the floor. And the fixed oh, encounters okay. have the better treasure. Okay. So I'm like, like, like hitting spots where I know there are fixed encounters mm -hmm. and then getting the treasures. And once I've gotten a handful, I'll just go change floors and come back. Nice. Rex Ross says, back in 81, I knew that the encounters were statistical equation and that the game started with some preset encounters. And I knew that Murphy's ghost was a recurring monster. Funny how I knew that because he was the first of that kind. Yep. Much better. Lots of fights this one. Uh, a mage and a bunch of fighters. Men in chain. Oh, those might be priests. Mm. The men in chain. Yeah. Could that also be fighters? I don't think on this no. one. I think they're okay. priests. Eleven, come on. That was another kind of fun thing for. Uh, Again, all of this is text, so it's like, hey, so and so stabs you for. Oh, I should have shielded. Oh, like, I'm, I'm bad. Yeah, like stabs you like two Oops. times for X damage or whatever. Um, we were able to see. Do you know Dios yet? All no. like the stats for the enemies, so we could see how many times enemies would 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 attack you, so to speak. Yeah, that, that um, was interesting. Yeah, like two hits there or whatever. So that was something that I was trying to work into some of the animation actions of saying, instead of just doing like a single attack motion, it was like, there's some of them that I was like, let's try to get like something where it looks like there's a small flurry. Oh boy. Really close. You got this. Oh, you ran away. Okay. Phew. Sweet. Let's do some healing and run away. 
Max Front says the notion of, quote, reoccurring boss monsters hadn't been invented yet. I think maybe, he didn't say it to me, but I, I watched an interview with Robert Woodhead with a fan of this game uh -huh. or series. And uh, the, the, the response he gave to a question was so funny. I mm -hmm. love repeating it, um, which is, ooh, this is not good. This could be a very bad thing. Um, he was asked why, when you made the follow-up to this game, I got paralyzed, um, did you choose to have you know, it'd be a continuation and use the characters from the first game. You had to play the first game to sort mm -hmm. of play the second game. And he said in the interview, it was amazing, he said, we have to understand no one had made a sequel to a game before. So we didn't really know what we were doing. Wow. That's crazy. And now it's nothing but sequels. <laughs> oh my god, do I have two paralyzed characters? Oh, that's so bad. Please die. How are we doing? Are doing? Three of them still? Oh boy. Mm. Two P-lizes. Uh, everything's fine. We got this. I believe in you. We got the zombies. Okay, we made it. No, we didn't make it. Dang it. Mm. I'm gonna be mad I... if I have an extra Molly. Okay, I know. Okay. I think I'm gonna do this. Be right back. Another bag of popcorn. All right, we got nice. through. Where the heck are we? All right. Ah, oh, come on. Be nice. So good. Friendly. Nice. Nice. We can get back. All right. Four one. Yes. Once again, it's all of our gold, so we're still not upgrading our gear we, in any fashion. True, but we <laughs> haven't lost any characters from... Not, not in a little bit. But, well, no, but I mean from this. Well, you're right. So we right. did, uh, what did we do, four revives total? Yeah, like they've But that was survived. a paralyzed, so you can't actually oh. lose a character from oh. paralyzing. Uh, let's add these guys gotcha, back gotcha. in our party. Rockstar is asking, pooling your gold and divvying your gold is missing in the restoration? Yes, so we changed it because um, one of our philosophies was if there was something you would just always do, mm -hmm. we just did it for you automatically. So mm -hmm. rather than force you to move your gold around to do shopping and stuff, uh, we just put it into a pool as though you had a virtual character you had pooled it to. Sure. Hopefully that works for you. It's unfortunate that we're not getting any money for gear because yeah. we're nearing the point where I want to move my thief into my front row. Got it. And, you and I have not you... upgraded anybody's gear at all. Oh, I, I, have, I have like crappy starter gear for yeah. everybody. Would, but you've probably only been grinding on levels one and two? That's correct. Um, I would like okay. to, so we're going to go to seven. And then our next grind spot is going to be... Oh, we'll go to level 7. Level 7. <laughs> Experience level 7. Oh, boy. Our next grind spot is going to be at 4-4. Four, four. And we skip 3? We're going to completely skip 3. So what's the reasoning behind that? Uh, because it's more efficient to grind on 4. 4, we're going to start to find... Got it. There's, a, there's a, a spot where we can step that sets off an alarm that turns on a bunch of encounters. On... Floor four. On floor four. Got it. And we can use that to set up some encounters that will drop some items, and the items there will start to get better than the gear we can buy uh, in the shops. So it's okay. a good place to grind. It also is a place where we can hit a 
scary big encounter. If we just roll bad, that's going to be the end of us. Oh, so boy. We're going to start to gamble a little bit. Oh, boy. And then again, uh, I imagine really figuring out all of that stuff is literally just trial and error. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, because you, you read it in a magazine or I on, guess, a, yes, on a website or whatever. I probably read it in Nintendo Power or something. Right. Well, I mean, like, I I had some strategies in mind from when I played it, like reading in Nintendo Power, but now, yes. now I'm in the car, like, oh, okay, now I understand why you yeah. did all these goofy things. Yeah. This is fascinating. You need a dead bishop. I can definitely appreciate this game for what it is and what it did. Um... And I'm enjoying watching you play through it and be proficient at it. Um, it would be horrendous if I was trying to do this because I do not have the muscle memory um, or familiarity with any of anywhere that I'm supposed to go, essentially. All right, Raxor says that yes, that makes sense about the pulling up the gold and sort of doing stuff is what you'd expect. Okay, we got poisoned, but we got a lot of hit points and all of our heals, so we might be able to get back. The party's in a weird order. This is goofy. Praxwar says, remember seeing a, a recent meme showing a smither who was watching all the adventurers coming out of the dungeons and wondering why nobody ever bought his weapons anymore. Yeah, it is kind of interesting sense. in this game that, um, like a lot of people ask us, um, where's all the other stuff that used to be in the, in the shop? And oh, the way right. that it works on the Apple II is... The shop has like some starter gear, mm -hmm. like some stuff you can buy immediately upon character creation, and maybe like one upgrade for that. And there's nothing else in the shop. Everything else is in the in the dungeon. But if you sell something to the shop, it, no. it remains in the shop's inventory forever. So okay. I, you can stash items you want to use later in the shop, for example. Interesting. And <laughs> buy them back for a lesser amount. Right. You will lose some money in that transaction, but. Interesting. This was far, far before Diablo's uh, shared stash system. Oh, I screwed up. So I think we can get there. I think we can get there. I will use the potion if it helps. Oh, we're in a combat round? Nine steps. <laughs> oh god! My fighter is poisoned! Don't you understand? <laughs> it would be so expensive and costly in other terms to revive him. Eleven steps. Nineteen. I think that's enough. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh my god. Damn. <laughs> See, that's awesome right there. And that that there is like <laughs> you being like, I know my way around this this maze enough to know that I'm able to get out. Um Let's see, Rex Roar is asking, hey, and by the way, thank you for watching and being super engaged with us. It's we very much appreciate it. Um they're asking uh, you specifically, being arms deep in the code, you might be able to answer this. I might. Uh, not me. A uh, limited number of scrolls or potions in the shop. Does selling, quote, broken items back to Bulltack restore the stock of potions? Uh, no, it does not. He should have, of the potions that he starts with, mm -hmm. which I think there are two, maybe three. Okay. Um, he has an infinite number of those. He will, he will never run out of them. And then anything you sell him that he doesn't start with, he will have the same number as you sold it. And okay. he will throw out broken items. He does not use them. Okay. Gotcha. Hopefully that answers your question. We'll 
give out another code and tell, talk about Extra Life again? Yeah. We can definitely do that. I've done one of those. I've done one of those. Let's jump over to, let's jump on this one. Um, the Epic Game Store. There are games on there that you can get yourself, but specifically if you are interested in getting your very own version of the making of Kratika. Which is a fantastic game, by the way. We haven't really talked about it much, but um, yes. part of what Digital Eclipse is doing right now is we're, we're calling it the Gold Master series. Yes. And what we're doing is we're taking a creator, a series of games, an individual game, and we're sort of doing a, a fusion between what would be a like a documentary about the game right. and a collection of games um, so that, uh, we, we like to say it's like the Criterion Collection. So it's like the mm -hmm. definitive experience, like the absolute, if you want to know something about the history, or the impact, or the zeitgeist of a game, these products have them in the game. Um, and you can experience them as a timeline, where you just look at the history of the game, but it's very interactive, so you can yes. play like, a ver you know, you can play the original game, you can play every version of the original game. You can play a, a remake of the game, you can play with commentary. Right. You can watch replays of the game and jump in at points of the game. It has um, some prototype games by uh, Jordan Mechner. And right. So it's, it's like, check it out. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, it's trying, to, trying to give all the context needed. So for new players, for old players, for everyone who is curious about what Chronicle is, as an example, they get to see it and learn more about its impact in, in the world of video games today. Um, so there we go into the chat. We have a code for the Epic Game Store version of The Making of Chronica. And then also as Ian had mentioned, I can throw the Extra Life Stream link in there again. Which again, I've off the top of my head, I've forgotten the uh, the dates of when that's happening. Uh, November third, fourth, and fifth, we'll be streaming from ten a.m. to ten p.m. So twelve hours of not specifically me and Justin, but people from Digital Eclipse, and we will be streaming a bunch of classic games. Okay. And it's a it's a charity fundraiser. Yep. Um, any donations you make at that link will go to the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. It's a yep. good cause. Please give, share the link. Um, even a little bit helps. Like if you give us a dollar or five dollars, that stuff adds up. So. Sure. All support is welcome. And then tune in for those three days and watch us go absolutely bug nutty streaming for 12 hours at a time. Yes. Yes. Forgot you have some games in mind for that one? I do. I've made a big list of games. Um, oh, that's right. The way we usually do that is. Uh, Everybody at the office signs up for slots, but I say, well, if nobody signs up for a slot, I'll fill the slot. So I end up doing a lot of the streaming yeah. sometimes, um, which means I have to prep, prep a lot of games, right. but we don't end up playing a lot of those games because people do sign up, so it's right. kind of a mix. I'm going to I'm gonna look at my schedule and I'm going to see when I will be what? best That's available. That's interesting. This is a difference oh, in so the Apple II version. My thief is asleep, which he shouldn't be because he's level five. He should have been resistant to sleep. Hmm. But he can't inspect the chest because he's asleep, which is not the case. In the Apple II version, your sleep will clear before the chest shows up. Oh, interesting. So wait, so, so they're going to they're going to wake up after this? It. Yeah. That's oh, no, no. fascinating. So you could have had someone else though inspect it. Yeah, but they would not be very good at it. It could have been their time to shine though. <laughs> the fighters like haha. Previous, I'm sorry, that code was for the Epic Game Store version of The Making of Kratika, one of the other games that we have recently put out into the world. And we've been kind of lax about um, doing codes on stream, but I think sure. I think it's a thing we're going to kind of do going forward. So if you if you like getting free games, come watch us play other games. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you don't like getting free games, then I don't know. Creeping creds. 
poisoned again. Uh, do I have two poison characters? I do. Oh, you're a jerk. <laughs> Please disarm this chip. <laughs> there we go. Um, where the heck am I? Okay. And I still don't have Watsimophis. No. Well, I think Fighter Three, Fighter. Four is the sacrifice here. Mm -hmm. Where, so I where think I can um, only save one of these. What floor are you on right now? Two, and I'm pretty far, pretty far from the stairs. So yeah, we're gonna let Fighter Four die. <laughs> we're gonna heal up Fighter Three. Carnival. I hope we get good heal rolls. He's, but isn't he just like right down? He's like one step down and. No, he's he's in town. We got oh. him back to town. Oh, he, okay. was, he was in the party when we got here. Okay. So I will go to. Um, a bolt axe trading post. And pool gold. 1752. I don't think that's enough. We might need to grind on uh, Murphy a little bit. Nice. That's a bummer. Okay. You're just considering your options? Yeah. So, what, one option is to grind uh, with Murphy. Safer bet, but longer. Well, I just need, well, hang on. Let me, let me remove him from my party. You're looking for, we're trying to get gold? We can't. There's only 1,500. I think I can do that. Good luck. Stay alive. Okay, he's back. He's back. Uh, and we want to go to the inn now. Okay, well that's... This table's getting, getting in use. Because we don't have, I don't have any character with another healing spell, so we're still using the very basic healing spell. Which does and how much? What's the one the to range? eight? Oh boy! And that was a one just then. So sweet. Oh, and we're up. I mean, we've all been there when we're healing our D and T characters and whatnot, and you're like, "Well, I'll, don't worry, I'll take care of you," and you're like, "Ah, oh, that's, that's that's three points," and you're like, "Great." I'm nowhere near 50 plus or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's going badly. <laughs> there was a lot of low rolls. <laughs> there was yeah. two ones back to back as well. Man. Oh, good. There we go. That's what you should be doing. Yes. How about that? Keep doing those things. Nice. All right, who needs it more? I'll give it to you. This is exciting streaming content, right? <laughs> uh, 
We did have some bad rolls in terms of the spells we mm -hmm. had. Like our our bishop probably should have Dios, which is the spell we're using to heal, and our you know, our priest shouldn't have um, our priest wouldn't have a higher level healing spell yet, but he might have an ability to cure poison. Do um, the spells that you learn as you level up are those randomly? I mean, like. So the way it works is they're ordered. Okay. And when you have a spell slot to cast a spell of a certain level, you will automatically learn the first one of that level. Mm -hmm. um, once you know the first one, you have a chance, and it's based on your stats, to learn the other spells mm -hmm. at the level. But you don't, aren't guaranteed to learn any spells. So usually okay. your stats are high enough that you just kind of learn all the spells right away, mm -hmm. but we uh, apparently are not that high Which is level. Interesting. Or we, I, like I said, we just kind of rolled badly. Sure. Like I would have expected to have a little bit more than we had right now. I should check out, actually, I have some okay. armor. I'm going to give this to the bishop and see if we have anything cool. Oh, bishop's inventory is full. Statue. I like to give all my key items. So another thing we did mm -hmm. that was a change from the original game is we took all the key items out of players' inventory because they just clog up space. Uh, in sense. the Apple II version and the NES version, I like to put the key items in my mage's inventory because he doesn't have any as much. I'll put the potion there as well. So let's see. I'll identify this armor. It's leather armor. That's not very good armor but I'm going to give them everything else we don't have identified. Okay. Which is all going to be crappy gear, but we can sell it for a little money. Mm -hmm. Get key. Oops. His inventory is falling. Bishop gets the armor. We have a shield. Can he hold the shield? His inventory is full. What's going on with our mage here? He also has a shield. Oh, I should be selling some of this stuff. I have a lot of stuff, turns out. Mm -hmm. and even more armor. All right. How much is let's some just of do the... a, Let's do an identifier run. I have been kind of neglecting this. So it's going to be crappy sword, long sword, robes, leather armor. Still crappy, but it's worth a very small amount of money. And that's all. So what's, what's the armor that we're looking for for... To move like the thief up into the front line that you were talking about. Well, we really need a lot of money to do that. We wouldn't be finding that armor here. Okay. Um, but we might find like plate armor for our, our mm -hmm. front lions, for example. Got it. Uh, let's do the bishop. Mage has some crap. Give this to the bishop. Shield. That's it. <laughs> it auto exits sometimes and it's confusing yeah. there. Large shield. Large shield. Leather arm. Boy. That was some crappy rolls, but I'm going to go sell all this crap so that there's more space in my inventory. Right. And we're going to make a few hundred gold from that. But anyway, all of that stuff is why we're going for the chests, because we're getting those drops from the chests. Gotcha. And once we go to level four, we'll start to find things that are like probably stuff we might consider equipping. Okay. All right. So you have some of it. You have leather armor, long sword robes. Foxroar says, yes, identifying the stuff to sell is better because Boltax charges just as much to identifying things as he pays to buy it from you. Yeah, people don't like having a bishop in their party, and I get it. They level slow, and they're not they don't have good utility, but I just I, the identify. Like, m the game for me, the part of the game where I play a lot is this part where you're, you're doing the grind, you, you want to find the items, so... You want a bishop and a thief. People don't like bishop and thief because they're only for the item grind, pretty much. 
but they are invaluable to me. And you said the bishop is the only one that has identified? The bishop is the only character who can identify. Got it. That's correct. It was not trapped. Even get the chests if they run away. <laughs> oh gosh, ah, my thief is poisoned. Not a fan. We can get him back. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. What, um, like items or potions can you buy that's like an antidote kind of thing? There is, it's like 500 gold though. <sighs> Rough. Movie Munch is saying... I think we can get him back. I'm rolling bad on these heels. Come on, Thief, I believe in you. Movie Munch is as wondering, does the bow for the Thief exist in the remake? They never found the drop for it. It does it not. Was... It is not part of the Apple II, so it is not part of Armor. Ooh. Was there... So there's we a We do know that people... Um, so... Later, in later versions of, I'm not even sure if it was in Wizardry 1, but in later okay. Wizardry games, okay. they ha added uh, weapons with reach and range so that characters... Oh, from the back row. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Um, that was not the case for this version. In some versions of Wizardry 1, I think I'm going to have to use that potion. Uh, in some versions of Wizardry 1, the thief could do a sneak attack. I don't think mm. he's going to make it. Do I waste the potion? Even if I rolled eight, he's not going to make it. Man, now we got to grind. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. All right, hang on. Cool gold. What do you got? 754. Mm -hmm. All right, guess we're fighting some Murphy. Yeah. Maybe just leave him in the party for now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go fight Murphy with a dead thief. I mean, sure. Uh... Stupid poison. Man, it is really brutal in the NES version. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Rockstar really says, my roster was always full of dead thieves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This will be faster now because our fighters can hit twice. And yes. our, we have more spell slots to cast Dilto, so. Our bishop might even be able to cast Dilto. I should check on that next time. About 750 more gold. Uh huh. And he drops, I think, somewhere from 30 to 50 per character. So nice. 46 gold times 5 is 200, so four of these, maybe five. Right. Rockstar is saying that XP should be higher because the party is only five characters now. It is, yep. So yeah. it's going to be good XP for my characters who aren't my thief. And the is thief levels the fastest, so that's okay. So there's a question. Um, like, I mean, I guess, mm. I guess getting to grind Murphy's Ghost Encounter, but like with like three, two, like a small group of people, like they will get more XP. Yes, but like, I guess, like at the point where you are able to survive with like one or two characters all the way down here by yourself without, I mean, I guess at this level single character like a single fighter would be able to sure survive problem but is you don't want you, not. the biggest impact we have now is mm -hmm. leveling our mage really oh, and also just... our cleric a little bit sure i guess that makes sense um which is why class changes are useful so like our fighters are really good at fighting murphy so mm -hmm. like, we might level them a bunch to get their stats up and then switch their class um, usually you do it the other way because you can keep it like you'll level 
you'll come here with a couple of fighters and some mages and mm -hmm. level the mages up real fast and get the higher level spells and then switch their class to fighter. Interesting. Or uh, another martial type. Yeah. Interesting. Well, get us some healing spells. That's cute. Because mm -hmm. I think everybody. I think by the time I go back to town, or by the time I get the thief two revived, anyway, everybody's going to gain a level. Mm -hmm. So we'll have tier three spells for the mage and the priest. That went really fast. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> hopefully the bishop will learn a healing spell like he's supposed to. <laughs> Do your job. It's dark. Oh, we're out of spell. I didn't even heal. It's because I was trying to heal the thief. I forgot about that. All right, level seven fighter, two level seven fighters. Fox Charles says, level up a bishop, then change the class to a ninja. You'll have all the spells, be a badass fighter, and be able to disarm traps. <laughs> one character party right there. With the added bonus that the armor class goes down when they're naked. <laughs> okay. That's the way to do it. Uh, oh, crap. Um, let's see, boy, you're cold. Oh, we're just, just shy. <laughs> Dang it. One more. Right, let me let me look at how we did in terms of spells. Okay. So you should know two healing. Oh, thank God. We got our higher level healing spell and cure poison. Gotcha. That's great. Um, the bishop... Didn't. No, oh, that's the wizard spell. Okay, wait, is it? How did you not learn the healing spell? Oh, he didn't level. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was going to be very mad at him. <laughs> uh, the mage should know. Let's read his spells. Uh, Dalto. Okay, so he's got two sets of group healing spells, or group damage spells. Great. So once we're back on our feet, we could maybe go to floor four. So like not just there read spells. That was essentially being like, let me just look at my character. Yeah, your character really, spells but list. Yeah, read spells. It's interesting. So you, you know, read their spell book. Yes, yes. Appreciate it. Actually, that fight will be enough to get the thief up. So I'll just go do that. Yes. Don't die. That would be awful if you died now. <laughs> Still no gear, though. We've spent literally every penny we've had on keeping these guys alive. Nice. Uh, okay, we want to go to the tavern. Add the thief to our party. Raxfar says when you have one or two spell points in a level, it helps to know which one or two, which one or two is missing. Thief stay at the inn. He didn't even level. Fighter, fighter. I guess I'm gonna start doing priest, even though we haven't upgraded our gear like at all. You mean thief? Yeah, yeah, this is what I do mean. Thank you. Right. So now, now this is much easier. Now I can cast Dial for lots of hit points at once. More Dios. Um. How badly are we injured? Twenty nine. Single DL or single DS. 
What's their uh, max HP? 33. Oh, 33. Okay. I'm going to go to four. We're going to try one encounter on four. Oh boy. Now, again, I'd say... Dip the toe in. Yeah, there's, a, there's an absolute chance that we're going to just hit something and we wipe and that's kind of the end of it. But this shouldn't be it. No. Okay. So we're at the elevator. We'll take the elevator down to four. Uh, three dragons and two flies. Okay. Oh we're gonna fight the flies. Those are in like dragonflies, is that right? Oh, yes. Or, okay. Oh boy. Right, I'm gonna cast. You don't know any big spells yet. I don't think dragons can be put to sleep. Let's try how we don't. I want you to cast Dalto. Cool. Kill the dragon. Four, four, two, 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 four. Seven. Okay, that didn't go as well as I'd hoped. Fight, fight, fight. Down on the mage. You can cast Halito on the dragons. You're gonna cast Delta on the dragons again. Good luck. God, stop. <laughs> We're so badly injured here. Okay, okay. Fight, fight, fight. DL on. We're gonna survive. Mm -hmm. But that was our that was our toe dip. Why did you get to breathe again? And why didn't you die? Scarier than I expected. Yeah. Um, you don't know Dios, so I may as well cast Badios. Uh, how do we do? There we go. Alright, so now we get like 1400 experience points. That's pretty good. Whoa. So that's why we came down here. Got but, it. Uh, now we're just gonna leave because <laughs> that went kind of bad. You're yeah. like, nice. I'm out. So then this was enough to level up? Is that what you were saying? Maybe. You know, uh, we're just going to be like kind of doing that, like, try to get a foothold on floor four until we can it. grind there. Our bishop should level up. Our thief will hold up. Rockstar says I keep forgetting to use Badios, Babiol, and Badialma. Nobody else leveled. What, what's going on, Bishop? What did you need? 983. Why are you leveling so slow? Were you dead for a while?
First time chat from Dank Deku Scrub says, Hello, I'm a younger fellow who's never heard of this game, but the mechanics seem so deep for an NES game. <laughs> yeah, they really were. Well, right. if, if the NES game came out in 1990, the original game was released on the Apple II in 1981. Yeah. Even deeper. <laughs> And uh, they were largely based on Dungeons and Dragons at the time. Yeah. Which was always like a very convoluted with uh, the the numbers behind all the role playing and whatnot. Dank Deku Scrub says they were doing some research and said or saw they got ported to so many different things. Yeah, it's a really popular game, um, especially in Japan. Yeah. Uh, is that good enough? Maybe. They're asking how makes them wonder how they fit so much in. Is this game very long? Like, um, it's ten floors. Mm -hmm. the, the the data that it represents the floors is actually pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, oops, I think I. We quit the game. <laughs> Gotta be careful what I'm talking. All right. It's all right. We did, we did it the right way, so we didn't screw anything up. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess like the game loop. In is... terms of gameplay, mm -hmm. yeah, you can get like 10 or 20 hours out of this game. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a full fledged RPG. Mm -hmm. Firefighter priest. Okay, I want to do the reorder. Oops. Ah, no, I equipped everything. Um, I should put an asterisk on that. Mm -hmm. It's it's ten or twenty hours if you know what you're doing, and it's a brutally difficult game. So it's very likely or very possible that while playing the game, you can suffer a major setback. Um, and a lot of people play this game to a certain point, suffer that setback, and kind of stop forever. Right. Um, but if you push through that, you know that that's sort of the the gameplay. All right, let's try dipping our toes in four again. It was a good good start. Like, we survived the fight. We didn't get any items, but that's sort of how we're going to do this going forward. D. A sign on the door reads, Testing Ground Control Center, authorized personnel only. Do not enter. So, so official. Enter. Suddenly, a loud alarm oh, bell can be heard. Then the bells stop. And are replaced by the sounds of guardian monsters. Rawr. So then we got a fixed Rawr. encounter. Rotting corpses. Rawr. Oh boy. And we're just gonna waste all of our spell slots to try to kill everything. Oh god, I got paralyzed. Oh god, I got another character got paralyzed. Why? I don't think Latumophis cures paralysis. Okay. I don't think. Uh, Dank Deku Scrub, um, yes, we're talking about the difficulty. To a certain extent, uh, if you die, you have to start over. Depends on how you're playing the game and the state of your characters. And... Um, so the way it works, if, you're, if your party wipes while you're in a fight, uh, they're actually left in the dungeon, and mm -hmm. you can recover them, but you have to have another party going after them. And then, they, yes, and then they would also need to be strong enough strong to survive enough to, to get to recover back however bodies. deep into the dungeon yep. you got, which in so and itself a, could be. It's a game about being very thoughtful about your approach, being very cautious, which yes. doesn't appeal in some ways to a modern audience, but yeah. uh, I think it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Brax, thank you. It says the game itself is just as tough today as it was back in 81, and these guys are keeping it faithful. We're doing our best. <laughs> so again, it's, it's relatively easy to keep it faithful since it's built on, our version is built on top of the Apple II code. Yep. So. Uh, 
seven hundred for paralysis. You guys are <laughs> highway robbers. All right. Well, we're gonna fight some more Murphy. Oh boy, let's <laughs> do it. Um, we only have one fighter. In fact, our Bris bishop's gonna be on the front line. That's gonna be interesting. Murphy Buns, thank you for supporting us. So they're looking forward to the next update. Glad to be supporting in Early Access. We thank you very, yeah, very super much for it. all the support for Early Access. This is how we were able to continue to improve the game. Um, any suggestions, any bugs that you guys find, any any comments, feedback is, is all welcome. We look at everything, we read everything, contemplate it, determine what works with what we're going to move forward with. Again, just watching you play through all this is like, oh yes, that's why it's like, oh, make the uh, animation it's a little quicker, a little snappier. <laughs> yeah, little. I'm telling you. All the stuff I'm working on now, I'm like, well, let's just try to like compress the actions, kind of let's get them as fast as fast as possible, but still enough time so it works. Yeah, if you don't like mm -hmm. the slow animations in our game, send hate mail to this guy. <laughs> Fifty-two gold times four characters is two hundred. I need that once more. To get one of the characters back. No way. Hey, thanks for thinking that the animations are wonderful. Keep up the good work. I will try. I think the animations are wonderful too. I, I like just know it. that people, you know, the, yes. because there's a lot of like this kind of stuff. People, yes. they, we want yeah. to have the option for them to be yeah. snappy. And I think uh, my initial ninja reaction is like, oh, play all the animations, play all my work, like make sure that my stuff is is visible. Um, but again, the more that we've been making development, and the more that I I'm it, it been able to understand. The type of game that we're making, I definitely wouldn't want to force all of my animations and slow down and sort of have that degrade from the experience because if, again, we're grinding against characters and enemies, you know, it's important to make sure that the experience is enjoyable. Oh, that was um, a lot of gold. All right, we're going to go get a fighter and then fight Murphy like three more times. See, Dank, Deku, Scrub, you were asking, were the inspirations inspired by anything? Were you talking about the animations inspired by anything? Because the looks of this version doesn't have any. Right, so the Apple version, uh, the NES version, is just the static images. Um, the inspiration that I was kind of getting from the animations came from a lot of looking at the, the illustrations, um, the concept art, and seeing the, the character poses and sort of general vibe that had been created in the past. Um, and there's a few animations that we tried to figure out, or at least getting the idle poses to sort of mimic or sort of harken back to some of the, the sprites that you were familiar with. Um, but that was the starting point of getting some of the idle poses set and then I would explore general motions off of that. Um, and there's some things that were suggestions, I think, with the, uh, the orc character. I think, um, I can't remember if it was in this version. There's some, there's some concept art where, like, the orc is doing, like, some, like, pointing kind of situation. There's a, there's a 
orc captain that's from a later game. That that's what it was. Sort of like it, it's a, you got a better look at what the orc looked like. So yeah. we incorporated some. Yeah, of Yeah, I think I used some, some of that design. into the intro animation. But there's things like that of just trying to find inspiration from all the art, and then just making stuff look cool and fun. Oh, and Rax, thanks for, uh, said kudos for making the Vorpal Bunnies look Python-esque. Yes, that was very much something of uh, pulling from Monty Python for the killer bunny. My bishop leveled and didn't gain the healing spell. <laughs> That's so, ridiculous. So should we just kick him from the party? He's like, is he demoted? <laughs> so then you have to, so uh, is that level seven now for him? Yeah. So you'd have to get him to level eight for a chance. And the percentages are the same? It's, um, well, if his stats go up, it's based on his stats. Oh, okay. And again, that's only a level up is gonna. <laughs> Rack says, yet again, bishops are so slow in learning. That's a ter like I, I've never gotten a bishop this far. I didn't learn the levels. Of <laughs> That's wild. Really changes the way this game plays. <laughs> That's crazy. Like he's gonna learn Mahalito before he learns Dios. That'll be silly. And the um, the thief is still paralyzed or dead? He's paralyzed. Paralyzed so. and back in town? Yeah, we're he? just fighting Murphy to get some money to bring <laughs> our thief back into the party. But it's good experience, so. Yes. Comical. And maybe someday, maybe someday we'll have money to spend on equipment. <laughs> We're still using the starter equipment. After you're uh, defeating Mordna, you'll be like, all right, we can go get a plus one sword or whatever. Uh, let me see. I'm going to throw out. Should I keep? Yeah, give them all out. Those are all for this stream. All right, we have two more codes to share with you guys. Um, the next one I'm gonna offer is a Steam key, and it is for the wonderful Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord remake, right? Is it calling it a remake? I always get confused over uh, it. I don't know. We, we're fighting a little bit over what to call it. It is the new remaster remake. Remaster yeah. new. It's it's the cool version. It's uh, all the kids are are. It's it's lit. It's I don't know. Um, it is the game that we are in the making. It's in it's it's in early access. We are continuing to refine it as we are able to, and we are only able to do that with the support of viewers and players and uh, players like you. So, in the chat here, we have a code for, what did I say it was on? It's on Steam. So if you haven't grabbed it, try out that code, see if it works, see if you're able to be the first one to grab it. And uh, you can enjoy slogging through the dungeons, just as we have been doing here. Maybe you will learn... Our exciting adventures in the dungeons. What's the spell that you were trying to learn? <laughs> Dios. Maybe you <laughs> redeem this code, and maybe you will be able to get Dios, right, before we do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That'll be the, the ridiculous... Um, we'll do a stream, we'll do a... For... for 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 uh, for extra life, we'll do a stream competing competitive wizardry where we try to see which characters can learn certain spells first. You know, know. it occurs to me. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. But um, if we don't finish this game today, and we don't party wipe, uh -huh. those are both pretty big ifs. Like, no, it's not an if that we're not going. We're definitely not finishing the game. Yeah, well, yes. But uh, if we don't party wipe, that's the big if. 
Uh -huh. um, maybe we'll see if we can wrap it up at uh, Extra Life. Oh, that's right, because you can save this. Yeah. Save it for us. Yeah, you don't have to do this all in one sitting. Come on, Justin. That's crazy. I mean, and again, I'm used to Nintendo stuff where you don't save. Like, this is... Yes. I'm definitely a, the, the age group of uh, types of games of playing stuff and just sort of having to leave the Nintendo uh, paused and on and you just turn the TV off and you just make sure nobody touches it while you go off to school and you come back home and you just keep playing. Potentially. All right, we got a full party again. Hey, it's the thief. See how long it lasts this time. So <laughs> far it's been like one fight. <laughs> This has all been just going down into level four once, getting <laughs> smacked, of, yeah. and then just like hightailing it back out of there. Yep. So again, um, every time you go down, like we always, I'm not from, I can't remember the pathways, um, but you always have to go all the way from the town and then all the way through floor one, two, three, four. No, no, no. Or so what I'm doing is there's an elevator on level one that has. Exits on floors one, two, three, and four. Oh, okay. So Fair I'm going right. through floor one to the to, elevator okay. and taking it to floor okay, to no. get here quickly. There we go. Um, which I is know. why it's a good grinding spot. Fair enough. Insects. All right, we can kill these guys. Is this a, is this a spider? Uh, I don't know. No. It could be, I think at this point, it could be mm -hmm. one of three different insects. Treasure repository, no encounter. Movie Bunch is asking if the NES wizardry does that weird reset thing on the eternal battery to save, right? I'm not sure. Uh, yes. Yes, I believe it does. Is that like the, the hold in the reset yeah. power button? Yeah. That's a spider. That's a huge spider. These yeah. guys aren't. That's interesting. Got poisoned. <laughs> These guys aren't fixed encounters, which is confusing me. So maybe this isn't a good place to grind. I mean, it's a good place to get um, encounters, mm -hmm. but it's not. If, if we're not doing the grind, it's not a good place to even get the experience because we want the drops. Right. So, instead of doing this, and this might be something that I only do on the NES version, I'm going to walk to floor four and I'm going to fight in the other parts. Of it. Okay. Um, Raxwar is suggesting at this point, they would suggest putting the priest in spot three and then move the thief to spot four until he levels up some more. Yeah, What's, well, the problem is, the reason I don't do that here, like this is about when I, because I, I had the priest um, in slot three, uh -huh. and I moved him to slot four in okay. favor of the thief. And the reason I do that is because at this point, if we lose our priest, we're in a lot worse shape than if we lose our And you'd prefer them not in the, the front line? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. This, uh, this art, this NES art for the dragonflies um, is like pretty much exactly what we recreated. Like I feel like kind of yeah. it, it just seems very very on point. All right, so I'll go back to floor one, and we're gonna walk down to floor four and see how bad that goes. What? Why are we doing this? Uh, because, oh. because, so on the Apple II, mm -hmm. when you hit that alarm, it turns on all the encounters in a certain okay. radius, okay. including the one in the treasure room. It did not do that on the NES. So you grind, I like to grind in the treasure room because it has drops. I want to sure. go places where there are drops because not only do I want experience, I want to be able to find gear that I might equip. Got it. Um, so I'm going to go to the other parts of floor four, which I'm going to do via the staircase. Okay. Uh, so that I can actually grind up some gear while we're grinding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
you know, Rax, you were saying, remember they had the dragonfly lose a wing when it dies in the animations. So the I'm not responsible for 100% of the animations in this game because again, there's 101 enemies in this game. That's I'm only one person. Um, but we had um, partners that we worked with and we had um, many people helping with animations and that was something that I believe, I can't remember if I made a suggestion to have the wings come off be something, but that may have been something that they were able to figure out on their own um, and add it in there. But that was definitely something that once I looked at the, the rig and saw that the wings were detachable, so to speak, um, it was something that was like, oh, we should definitely have some wings come off because that's just looks good, looks good. Oh, my party's all in a weird order. I have to fix that. I have two Mahalitos um, and two Deltas. Hello, first time chat. Bash Bro Mayhem. I'm asking if Kaiwa Panda is around. That's me. Hi, everybody. And that's this guy right here. So, yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, Dank Deku Scrub is asking how big is your team? Like we internally. are, you know, it depends on how you run the yes. math. Like we, roughly between seven and nine people who are in the studio, and we have some outsourcing resources yes. as well. Yeah, but small, small team. Um, that is small enough that for any given discipline, like art or design or programming, we kind of only have like one or two people. Right. Internally, I am the animation. <laughs> Justin is all of the animation in house. But again, we have partners who are able to help out. And do a lot. There's because there's, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of a lot of characters to create, a lot of art to create. So. Bash Bro Mayhem is saying, "Yo, the champion to you." you know. <laughs> So I miss it. Did you make it down? Yep, we're on floor four now, and Got I'm just it. walking through some of the fixed encounters. Oh boy, gas dragons, cool. So, so cool. the the first dragons that we fought previously, they were just labeled dragons. Right. We didn't identify them. They were probably oh, gas okay, dragons. Oh, okay, okay. They could have been dragon puppies. Um, yeah. So I want you to cast Delta. And remind me after this to uh, reorder my party. To re or to reorder? Yeah. Because they're in a weird order and it's making me make incorrect choices based on muscle memory. Right. Fighter, fighter, thief, priest, bishop. Reorder your party. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Yes, after you did it. Oof. Tank Deku Scrub is saying, I know some of your other products are more like history with concept art commercials and the whole history of the game. Is that in this game? Uh, it is not in the current early access version we're, we're releasing right now. And right. Um, it is also currently not on our roadmap, but we know mm. that's something that people would really like to see. Right. So if it's something you would like to see, please help us get the word out. Because yeah. the, the way that happens is the early access campaign is, is successful. Yeah. Very successful. <laughs> I mean, if, if you are a fan of the Goldmaster series and making Necronica, um, if you're interested in like the precursor to that, the Atari 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. um, which those are both, you know, Atari, that's not part of the Goldmaster series, but it's very much in the same vein of um, an interactive documentary where not only does it give you um, games of, of, of the past to play through, it, it gives a lot of the context surrounding what went into making those games and that era. But yes, we would love to do something along that line with this game, or with our game, but we need to work up towards that and get the support for that from viewers like you. Oh no, this is bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, cleric. Sweet. I think, I think my mage did not get silenced. I think. I cast Delta. Lost a character. Which one went down? Fire four. Oh no. Alright. Okay, we can survive this fight though, but 
Boy, we're just not making any forward progress here. Let's have Priest heal us up a little bit. Dragonfire X Nova is saying, if one would be interested in going through floors five through eight, do all of the stairs line up as they should? They say they know in this version there's a problem with stairs to five and six, they don't match up evenly. Was this a problem for the Apple II? So the stairs, um, they don't line up the way you would expect. That is not a thing that happens in this game. Uh, they're essentially like teleport, like the, the tile you enter that is a staircase in the Apple II version mm -hmm. anyway, has a destination X, Y, and Z coordinate and it's not, it's not straight below where you were. Right. And if there's a set of stairs, like I don't think there's any multiple stairs, but like mm -hmm. they, they don't quite line up the way you think. There is an error in the Apple II version that I think is what you're calling out, okay. or is if you go up from floor, I think it's from floor seven to floor six, but it might be six to five, like you said. Mm -hmm. there, there's a weird, like like you don't wind up where you think you should, oh. and ours also like does that. Yeah. Like offset or something like that? Yeah, you just wind ones. up in the, in the wrong area. Okay. Um, but we, you know, we're aware of it and we might fix it, but we don't necessarily have to fix it either. True to the original. <laughs> uh, poison? Why would you poison me also? Oh, Can't you tell I'm all... Oh my god. That's not good. Can't you tell I'm already having a bad day? So like those... The art there for the ninjas there. Um, it's very cool. That's an example where... Look at the art and it's like, oh this is cool, but this is a mid, like, running angled pose, can't really do a sweet idol for, for our characters in 3D in that sense. I don't think we can save these characters. I think we are all dead. I think everyone's dead? Mm. <laughs> Oof. Okay, yeah. Do you have a Mahalita? No, you don't. Oh, boy. Uh, yes, now, now I think we're all dead. Okay, what do we do about it? We could try to run. Mm. Our thief and our priest are going to die from poison in a few steps. Or a few rounds. The eight Komodo men are going to kill us <laughs> pretty fast. I have no big spells. Um, I can cast like... We're going down fighting, like you suggested. Yeah. I think that's the way to go. There we go. It's more. the heroic thing oh, to man. do. We overextended. Oh, these are... Wait, no, these are... These are Sapphire Ninja. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, he was going to die anyway. You took out one of them, though. We did. Oh, boy. We just got seven more to go. Yikes. Okay, yeah, this is a party wipe. <laughs> oh boy. So what time is it? 5.30. Uh, okay, it's almost about time we would have stopped anyway. Sure. I so mean, this, this is, is usually how a, a game one. of wizardry ends. Uh, you want to give out our last code? Do we still have another code? Yes, we have one <laughs> last code to soften the blow against death. Um, this is not a game for our remaster, remake, our version of Wizardry, but it is a Good Old Games version of The Making of Chronica, which is... Uh, I don't even know how, what, what to words say. are you saying? Um, a deep dive into Chronica and how it was made. Um, interviews, um, just, like all sorts of information. Hey, you did I, such a good job last time. What's going on over there? It's it's a it's a code. It's right there. It yeah. is in the so this the is chat. good old games making of Chronica, which yes. is it, it is basically a fusion of a documentary and a video game. Yes. Part of the Gold Master series, which is something we're doing. 
where we do a deep dive on a video game or a series of video games or a creator and uh, we try to capture the zeitgeist uh, of, of what was going on when the game was created and its impact yes. on the industry. It's got lots of interviews in it. It's a lot of um, breakdowns of like how they did the rotoscope. prototypes and stuff. Yeah, like the yeah. rotoscoping stuff is really cool. Yeah. So um, I think you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's uh, something we're, we're trying to do. There are going to be more entries in the Gold Master series. Yes, um, Making Necrotica is 001. But in anyway, so that was wizardry, or like maybe half of wizardry when you party kill. And Go. What are you pointing at? I'm, I'm, I'm on the wrong direction. I'm pointing out <laughs> all the, the, um, the tombstones. Here we go. So thanks for joining us today. Again, I'm Ian, and this is Justin. We Hi represent there. Digital Eclipse. We do the, this is our Saturday stream. We do games for fun on the Saturday stream. We do it the first Saturday of every month, starting about 2 p.m. And we go like two to four hours usually. It looks like we were in almost four today, but that yeah. was fun. Yeah. Um, did a deep dive on Wizardry, got to play a little bit until we wiped. And uh, we'll be back on November 5th. Now, usually, like I said, usually we do a stream the 2 p.m. first Saturday of every month. Next month, in November, mm -hmm. we'll be doing Extra Life. Extra Life is a charity fundraiser. Um, we'll be raising funds for Ch Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Uh, I believe Justin is going to share the link to my page for that uh, right now in the chat. Um, if you want to see more of us or more of Digital Eclipse, we're going to be doing 12 hours for three days, 36 hours yes. total, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., uh, Friday, November 3rd, Saturday, November 4th, and Sunday, November 5th. We'll be doing lots of classic games and hanging out and having fun. Uh, we'll answer questions about the games we're working on, just like we do in this stream. Um, and again, it's a fundraiser, so if you, if you can kick it a few bucks, um, we super appreciate it. It's tax deductible. A little bit goes a long way. If you want to give us a dollar or five dollars, that adds up. So check it out. Um, and Justin and I will see you there. We'll both yep. be there. And uh, we'll be back in December for a follow-up. I think we actually have a specific game in mind for December. I'm sorry, we're not getting back to the games you, you wanted to That's do. fine. I'm, I'm going to make Kevin do? play Christmas Lemmings because he said he would stream with us if he could play Christmas Lemmings. Crazy. So we're going to do that the first week in December. Fair I'm enough. Make him do it. Fair enough. Um, anyway, uh, All right. Justin's going to close out here. And it was fun hanging out with you guys. And uh, go buy Wizardry and tell your friends about it. Yes. Have fun dungeoneering, everybody. Later.